Hello and welcome to the Unofficial Controller Podcast, your weekly gaming podcast episode. Can you believe it? 170. Well, you probably would if you tuned in last episode for 169. But Xbox Showcase must deliver. With me, George, Bobby, RGT and Seb, Bill Gates, to my rusty garden gates. Gentlemen, how is it going? Good, good. Um, yeah, going really well, thank you. You know nice they're going to hit you up in the community correction, pro- like, it's Seb, George, come on. I was about to do your whole contractually obliged <laughs> intro, and my you've bad. blown I'm it. Sorry. I'm sorry, go <laughs> ahead, go ahead, my bad. Just just put an ice pack on the ego for two seconds, here it comes. He's been missing for a while, but the American office got struck down with the flu. But Triple S didn't let that stop him. Triple S took an immediate flight to Hawaii to his own private retreat where he had an IV bag and some dialysis so he could get over the illness. But while he was there, he's been promoted to be the American office's, I don't even know what, if you could see what I see in front of me now, he's wearing... It is incredible. He's he's wearing what looks like Michael Jackson's coat from Bad, but it's actually a a long gown. (laughs) And he's wearing purple-tinted glasses. With his own Titantron video in the background, it's Triple S, as I'm obliged to say. <laughs> Triple S, welcome back. Well, thank you so much. It's an honor to be back, first of all. And yeah, um, here in Hawaii, we, the, you know, like I, I got off the jet and they handed me the, they handed me like, what is the flowers over here called? The loy, the loy, the like, yeah, they handed the me layout. one of the layout. Layout. Thank you. I'm like. And you know I'm a Texan. I have to say it with that Texas twang, but like <laughs> you called it you know, loins, not loins. They're like, very not... different things, Triple S. <laughs> yeah, because you're over here. You know, <laughs> I, I I do believe that is like a um just a interpret different interpretation of a word <laughs> there. But I, I digress. It's an honor to be back on the show. It's been a while. I've been missing you guys. You know the. The fur the fur cake corporation does me good, but it's always a pleasure to be here and with my second home in the UK. So I, I enjoy you guys, and I'm glad to be amongst you, you gents again. Well, much like the UK office, while you were out sunning yourself, someone needed to be back home doing the hard yards. Bobby, keeping the American office alive, obviously all four of us reunited. That's it, like Captain Planet, but Return of the Jedi. Yeah, we okay, are. we'll do it that way. Uh, Bobby, how's New York been keeping you this fine week? Um, it's okay. Um, is it hot yet? No, not yet. It 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 um it was last week, but this week's been uh, you know nice nice and calm, nice and chill. Um, Next time it's hot, can I request that you go to work with hot time summer in the city on loop on your on your device? <laughs> not a problem. Excellent. Also, like summertime by um, what's it, Mango Jerry? Oh, I mm. thought you were gonna say Fresh Prince. No, nah, he does summertime. sing that as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, summer, summer, summertime. So, so I, I love that song, you're right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then, but no, bringing, it's nice and cool here, which is bringing nice. things like down maybe 10 levels from the celebrity of you guys. RGT, thanks. How suffer. <laughs> <laughs> We've gone Hawaii, New York, Suffolk Coast. Peckham. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been okay. Weather's not been brilliant. Yesterday was quite nice at work. That was sort of the first sunny day we've had this week. But um, yeah, it's been okay. Work's been an absolute nightmare. So it's nice to sit down and chill out with you guys. Especially seeing Triple S. Unbelievable. Is that, is that a place I can check the jet to? Um. You'll probably have to come into a nearby airport. I mean, unless you've got a, you could come land somewhere near and get a helicopter to fly you in. I'm sure you could land in the garden. Okay, okay. I mean, is traffic bad or anything like that? How's how's concierge service over there? The odd tractor, you'll be fine. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay. The yeah, odd tractor. Yeah, that's that's about it right here. Just okay. Skip straight to the helicopter. Yeah, George, well, how you doing? I mean, I'm great. I was about to say the weather in Farmington has been gorgeous. I was out on the uh, croquet <laughs> lawn yesterday, uh, a couple of glasses of Pims, just generally really enjoying myself. Video games. I was outside hissing at the darkness. I don't know what's become of me. 
Um, I suppose on completion of this episode, well, I'll take my eyes shut and play a video game through the medium of feel. A little <laughs> rub and tuck, as they say. Uh, gentlemen. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I might have I might have the wrong end of the stick there as far as explanation goes, but mm. I'm just going to go with it. Everyone who knows the show to this point, and I think we need to put an APB for Odders, because I see he's alive. Mm-hmm. I'm not seeing any movement. All right? Mm. So, Odders, grip tight of your hiding spot, because we're sending out the sniffer dog, because I see gentlemen. What? What are you? <laughs> oh, what have you been playing? And let's let's start with oh well doing the prep on air because that's how we do things here. Triple S, <laughs> Seb, do you have a hidden gem or no? Um, no, I don't. I don't have a hidden gem, unfortunately. Um, no, I am. It? Tell Furke. Mm. He's meant to no, hidden, no, no, no. Have let... a hidden, hidden gem. Ever. Hang on a minute. I'm in contract negotiations with Furke over the phone. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Good Tell them. He's meant to provide hidden indigent. I know that. And then what next? RGT? Oh, I ain't got a hidden gem. I want a different theme tune. Like, mm. Here, here's the thing, George. It's like I'm reviewing a couple of indies coming up. Um, what might be indie games of the year, and that right now they're redacted. You know, they're embargoed information. I, you know, like I could tell you about some, but they're like four or five weeks old since I haven't been on the show. But okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, in that case. We'll start with you. What have you been playing? Me? Like, what have I been playing? Yeah, you. Okay. You're on a podcast? Yeah, yeah. The segment's called What You've Been Playing? You know, it's just... (laughs) The the crazy thing is I was gearing, uh, you know, mentally gearing up for my my segment, and it was going to be like this. It was like, finally, the Triple S has returned to the UCP podcast, where I could just talk about where I've been playing. And I've been playing... The Lord of the Rings Golem. I've I've been playing that that little mess of a game. I've um, Oof. yeah, I've been playing. How bad uh, is it on a scale of one to ten? Let's do the reverse. Ooh, that's an interesting question. Um, I would probably say it is Poochies at level three. I would probably say Oof. it is a three out of ten. So is it a bad game? Is in bad game design and not very well made, or is it a bad game? Is glitchy and just a mess. Oh, I, I both, to be honest, <laughs> both. Um, it is very much, it feels like a 360 game that was released in 2023, you know, oh. graphically and, and technically speaking. You're also like, it feels like a game that doesn't know what it wants to be. Like at the very beginning, it's like, it tries to be a farm simulator, so to speak, what? where you're hurt, where you're hurt. Golem. Yeah, where you're hurt, where you're, <laughs> I, I kid you not, like, there is like missions to where you're herding uh, like farm animals and you're trying to like corral them into a pen in Mordor of all places. Wow, yeah. I was and, I was stuck for ideas on that, weren't they? Oh man, it, oh, it's terrible. God. Like it really is. It's like it doesn't know it doesn't know what it wants to be, and I think that's like the problem here. And also like whenever it does try to like nail out like a, I guess you could say a theme, so to speak, it doesn't do it well. Like. Golem, you know, sure, it's Golem and Smeagol talk to one another, but like, there's also like errors in like where like you see like an antagonist and he's supposed to be like this menacing foe and he's supposed to be talking to Golem and so to speak, but Golem's voice is coming out of that the antagonist and like they've accidentally swapped voices while all this is going on oh. and. Yeah, and, you know, it'd be okay. You know, it's a it's a glitch, it's an error, you know, they'll patch that out. That's what you kind of think in that situation. But like it it's so bad that the fact that, you know, like it doesn't happen at the intro of a cutscene. It happens in the middle of a cutscene. It's like Golem starts talking, you think, okay, everything goes normal. And then it cuts to the bad guy and it's Golem's voice still talking with the bad guy's mouth like moving. Oh. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Do you like video games, podcasts, and reminiscing? I'm actor, video game writer, and total sweetie pie, Connor Savage McCabe, and on each episode of Call Me By Your Game, I sit down with a guest for an intimate look at a special game from their past. Did you and your dad beat Spyro the Dragon over the holidays? Or was Halo 4 the one thing that united your roommates during your senior year of college? Stories like these are what Call Me By Your Game is about. From video game content creator Janet Garcia to Hades voice actor Courtney Venez, I interview wonderful comedians and game industry friends about these memories. 
Check us out wherever you get your podcasts, and maybe someday you'll call me by your game. Why would you pay all this money for a license? Let's hype it in magazine previews right up until the point where people got hold of the game and realized what a hot mess it was going to be. I just don't understand. Did they spend too think much on the franchise? Yeah, I think I think a lot of these licenses, they pay so much money for the license that most of their budget for these games is eaten up just paying for that. Oh, I it's, think the game it, suffers. It gets worse, guys. Like they oh, make no. you pay se- they like this is a $70 game, by the way. This is a seventy dollar game. That's a premium price tag. And Tears all this of the is, Kingdom all of a sudden looking like good value for money set. I don't know. It's running at thirty no, FPS. <laughs> it's running at thirty FPS. No ray tracing. No. <laughs> yeah. Let's be honest. Okay, game of the year. False king. False king. <laughs> false king. <laughs> Blasphemy. I say. Who had that? Who had that in the fantasy league? You did. You did. Did I? Yeah. yeah. Am I winning that now? Let me let me so. check. But... I tell you what, you have a little rustle up for that. Is that all you've been playing? Just Gollum, or are you going to hit us up with something else? Oh, I've been playing. You know, it's been a while since I've been on the show. I've I've played. <laughs> you know, played through Tears of the Kingdom. I've, I've um. Let's see. I played Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Beat that bad boy. I've played um. What is it? Dead Space remake. Remember, I am once again a chicken and. That is a little too scary for me. Um, I played through the Rising uh, Forbidden West, Burning Shores DLC. I played through um, what is it, Dead Island Two recently? Jesus and Christ, man! Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I told you it's been a while, man. I've I've been been mowing these things down since um since I've been gone, and you Hawaii know, uh, has done you well. Yeah, yeah, it's it's done, done me pretty good. Um, and then let's see, I've um. Played a little bit of the um, Diablo 4 as well, and such like that, and a big, big hot new release. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and then I think the final one I think um, is worth mentioning. I've played through, what was it? What many will call the game of the year. I've beaten and, pl- and completed WWE 2K23. So. Those are kind of um, what I've been playing. <laughs> Game of the year, my absolute hero. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, that was a quite an, an unabridged list of what you've been playing, and I'm, um, you know, hopefully we can catch up on that in a short moment. While you get us an update on the league, let's keep things moving along, Bobby. What have you been playing? Everyone's most favourite little cherub. <laughs> What's I a cherub? Just, um, um, I, it's a chubby little angel. That's how I feel. That's why I look at George. You just want to look at me. We ain't got yeah. no time for that. Give nice. me the games. The eyes. Um, so place. I played... I've got the platinum for Cars of the Dead, which I actually enjoyed. It's mm. not too long. Maybe like six a six hour game. It's not bad. Um, <laughs> and then I've been playing Jedi's Survivor. I think I'm almost at the end game. I pretty much think I unlocked everything. So now I'm just going to try to go back to do some things I missed and then maybe finish the game. But then I heard there's only stuff, some stuff you can do after. So I'm just kind of torn. But AKA the out. real game of the year. I, I mean, I think it's great so far. I play nothing better this year. Uh, exactly. As a Star Wars aficionado, I enjoy the game as a game but the story as my eyebrow raised doesn't feel as tight and concise mm. as the yeah, not as good game. as the original game. No. Everything yeah. else about it is better. The story is weaker. Mm-hmm. That's my only gripe with that game. Bobby, anyway, sorry, a.k.a. No, the UCP Cal Kestis, as you were, sir. No, that, that's it, just those two games, yeah. Oh, okay, right. Okay. And you enjoying them both? So you're right. You've done all the unlocks on Kobo and you found the aquarium guy and you've got that stocked mm-hmm. up and looking sexy and the garden's yeah, going yeah. well. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's cut to RGT. Mm-hmm. Tell us what you've been playing and I'll hype you up with your intro. Um, pretty much. Well, apart from last Sunday, it was a bank only here in the UK. So we had, that was my daughter's 18th birthday party. So we had a bit of a, Bit of a get together of family and friends, so we uh, we had a bit. I did put some pictures on 
disco people have probably seen, had a bit of a gathering in the shed and he played many a thing from California Games to Mario Kart 8, just everything everyone could play together. But mostly what I've been playing at home is just pretty much one game at the moment, and that is Tears of the Kingdom. I have been playing Zelda. I reckon I'm 25, 30 hours in at the moment. Um, now, I have a question for you. Yeah. Lost in the Amazon co-host OG Tom mm-hmm. reached out. He sent me a what can only be described as a, a carrier parrot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a carrier parrot. Yeah, because they don't have pigeons over there. So. A carrier parrot. That is it's an exotic. <laughs> yeah, it's an exotic <laughs> delivery. You know. Wow. I, I mean, how else will Tom send something? I don't like well that, to get know? the farm. Exactly. And it's yeah, like, yeah. I must have been nappy. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom, enjoying it, but spent so long on the first game, this is feeling not that great. Spending lots of time in the underworld as its new content, not impressed with the over-flying content area. And he he loves... How long has he played it for? I would say Tom, on his own in the Amazon, has probably dedicated every waking minute to this game. So I should say he's quite far into it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I had a similar feeling for the first five to ten hours because and also like i said this before with last week with jedi survivor it never feels as good as the first game because the first game was a surprise and it's the same with breath of the wild you didn't expect breath of the world to be as good as breath of the world was and tears of the kingdom based in the same world you don't get the same feeling because you already know the feeling of the game if you know what i mean and i was like that for the first five to ten hours and then things started clicking again and i got started getting used to the fuse and the new uh, dynamics of the game. Um, and at the moment, I am, actually, the only reason I'm only playing that one game at the moment is because I'm completely hooked in that world again. I'm really, really, really enjoying it there. And mm. I still haven't done any more story missions since last week. I have just been unlocking, I think I've done about six towers now. I've done about 25 shrines, just getting my heart canisters up and the... Um, Stamina canisters up um, and just love and exploring at the moment. Um, I just get, I, you know, I, there's other people like me, but I just get lost in that world. And I, I haven't found an open world in any game that I enjoy as much. I know it's like Seb said, it's 30 FPS, um, not 4K. I like the graphics. They're very good. I mean, yeah, you get a bit, if you're climbing some rocks and you look at it and there's some ivy on the rocks, it is 2D flat. <laughs> you know, it looks... It looks what it is, but actually just exploring that world is a very well put together open world map, which is, is plenty to do, plenty to explore. Yeah, and I'm really, really enjoying it. Good. Is that all you've been playing? Yes, pretty much. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll do a quick round robin through mine and then we can mop up with uh, maybe an update on the league or you. Well, I've or got a hidden Vice gem Prince. if you want that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll come back to that. Yeah, so, okay. um, I've been playing, I don't really feel like I've had a lot of time for playing games. I put some hours into Bomber Crew, still really enjoying that. Gaming Graham reached out, he's giving it a go as well. So he's... Yeah, uh, he, he had the base just up the road from me, <laughs> ironically. Well, that everyone's base is that is that base, which is, is it? Yeah, Yeah, yeah that's, I didn't that's, even think it was a real place. 15 minutes up the road for me in real life. <laughs> is it still an active base or no? No, it was because uh, it was an American base, and Americans always have twin bases. So there was Rendlesham and there was Woodbridge, um, which was called Bentwaters. And then uh, um, uh, it must be about 15, 20, about 20 years ago, they closed them back down. They're still owned by the MOD, but they're not active bases. Sometimes I think the uh, UK Army does drills on it, but they're not active bases. Mm, Interesting. Well, like I say, that game just keeps on giving. Just need to put some more time in it. I had a little bit of farming simulator, not enjoying myself currently on Madden. I find like the, yeah, I don't know. Good job it was cheap. Hmm. Are you a football fan? Not. uh, My introduction to football, it's been on the periphery, and we're talking NFL here. uh, It's been Mm -hmm. on the periphery of of me my whole life. And NFL 2K5 got me really deeply into it. And I thought it was time to give it another go. Um, but I'm not finding the game very rewarding. I am leveling up my character and things are starting to get a bit easier, but I just didn't expect it to be such a grind, if I'm honest. But there you go. 
Um, and one thing I have noticed, although they have similar production values and they both represent, you know, a, a major American sport, the way MLB does it just feels so classy without even trying. Whereas Madden, it's had me thinking, would I want something more like face of the franchise in Madden in MLB? And the absent, the answer to that is absolutely no way. It's gross. It's tacky. It's horrible. It's this badly CGI woman with straw for hair checking in on my progress. I just want to throat punch it. Like, leave me alone. And although I'm on a nine game losing streak, they come and tell me how great I'm doing. Like, what are you, what are you even looking at? Or am I just nailed to a story that goes one way every time? It's utter you are. drivel. Um, not, not enjoying that. Well, there's elements of it I like. There's elements of it I hate. Um, so it draws me back to MLB, which is good news. Farming Simulator has just been a very rewarding, calm place for me to spend my uh, the rest of my downtime. And that probably probably draws it to a close. A little bit boring, but that's why we do a podcast. Those that can, game. Those that can't, podcast. Um, before we swing round to RGT, Seb, have you got an update on the league? Who's winning? Who's losing? Of course I do. Um, with 88 points, George, you are currently up like Tears of the Kingdom. Currently got your 30, 32 extra big boy points, which has mm. got a 96 critic score. That so it got you up to 88 points. Still a lot of lot of um the year left to go though. So um Debs Babs, which is RGT, currently has 16 points. Um he has Marvel Spider-Man coming up later this year. Path of the Exile 2 coming later. Um, Metal Slug Tactics coming later. And Oxen Free coming later. Hopefully Spider-Man delivers, but, you know, maybe Oxen Free can get him back in the game, so to speak. Um, Bobby's Devils has 30 points right now. Um, his He has Hades 2, Lies of P, and Blasphemous 2 coming up on, on the pipeline for him. And maybe that'll get him into the game, so to speak. And then, like, Tacos, Games, and Chaos, which is me, I have 82 points. So I'm six points behind you, which means you are currently in first place. Um, I currently have too many games to currently list right now coming up because I've hit a lot of the indies. And, you know, the, so danger, it, the danger, though, with taking extra games on like you do, which is, you know, is, is one way of looking at this. But for every point they get below, you're yeah, pounding your pain. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. But also, it's like it's one of those things to where I'm like, if they just get seventy or higher, it just it's like a death by a thousand cuts. I can possibly win that through that method, you know. Mm. Not to mention that's how this is going to go, isn't it? Well, the problem is that George has Starfield. <clears throat> I mean, I you know, Starfield can go either way. Like if that, I doubt that game reviews below a seventy. You know, so, so down. Yeah, I was just like, that's you know, bringing Zeppelin. me down. Is it? That's the like the well, Zeppelin. We're gonna get into this shortly, <laughs> so I can't wait to hear everyone's predictions for the Xbox showcase. I think the predictions are gonna change a little bit because, like, Diablo Four is currently has a critic score, but not necessarily a point score. They're they're rounding up the points for that, and that'll kind of with that eighty nine that'll immediately bring me up to the first place. But not only that, then. You have Final Fantasy 16 coming up on the pipeline for me as well. How have you got that? We I drafted Final Fantasy 16 and um and Diablo me as like, and then you drafted in that same round. You drafted Horizon Burning Shores, and your your heart spoke to you. You drafted it will be the show. Yeah, and it reviewed well. Yeah, it reviewed solid. It was 81. It got you 11 mm. points. Mm hmm. I, you laughed. You all laughed at me, but I knew. I th yeah, for sure. I think though, Final Fantasy 16 it's going to beat your eleven points, though. <laughs> I've had a well, I think of MLB. Well, has we'll the best see. We'll see. Actually, in the in the news, because Square are a little bit worried about where sixteen is tracking versus fifteen. So that'll be something exciting to to pull out of that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what were you saying, Bobby? Sorry, I rambled. No, that. MLB The Show has the like best presentation of all the sports games I've played recently. Yeah. It just oh, looks yeah. and executes in such a clean way. Um, the commentary and the visuals always work 
you know, there are a couple of glitches every now and then, but not compared to some of the glitches I've seen in Madden. My goodness. Madden is absolute trash. Me. I will be deleting that today as a symbolic gesture Ooh. of my love for baseball. Um, with all that said and done, we've gone acoustic again, guys, because it felt right. RGT <laughs> is like the Lone Ranger riding on down to bring hidden gems to me. Oh, unplugged remix. That's very Nirvana MTV right there, bro. If if I get a, if I get in a complaint, it'll be gone immediately. But so far, I haven't had one, so I presume it's pulling fans towards us, yeah. not away. I'd say at the moment it's soothing. Mm-hmm. Soothing. What do you think that the acoustic one's better than the AGT? <laughs> That's normally when you haven't had much sleep and about four espressos in the morning is when you yeah. felt that. At the moment, you're getting sleep. You're toning down the late night game and then you're just doing a gentle soothe and unplugged. And have you noticed MTV? I've barely played anything? I like it. And mm. I'm boring. All right. So I'd say you're boring. I'd say you're last week you were a bit of a like I said, you're a three year old who'd had too much pop. This week Pop. You're a bit pop. Yes. Fizzy, fizzy pop. <laughs> I guess. Is that what you call soda over there too? Yeah. Fizzy pop, yeah. Fizzy oh. pop. Yeah. You just call it's it soda. Nice. Yeah, we call it like soda. soda. Yeah, yeah soda it. to us is soda water. Nah, man. No, we call that our seltzer. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh... <laughs> Hang on, wait. We're lost in the weeds. Yeah. As a grown up who's had sleep and not yeah. enough coffee, <laughs> I must put the train yeah. back on the tracks. Unless this hidden indie gem has got something to do with fizzy pop. No, unfortunately not. But it's 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 a game that I thought I'd already done as a hidden gem for some reason. I don't know if I dreamt it. I could have sworn I'd done this. So oh, well, we'll find this, out. Let's see if yeah. we can guess. Because um, this, this, is... this little guessing game, BTW, I don't know if you play along at home, this has got to be like one of my favourite parts of the hidden gem. <laughs> yeah, I do quite like doing this. Uh, this was released in originally in 1993. Mm. That was 10. This was developed by EA and it was published... <laughs> by EA. It was on the Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis. Oh, you're losing me now. This is a hidden gem? Mm -hmm. 93, EA, made by EA, published by EA. Mm. It's it's got to be a sports game like in HL. No, no, it isn't. And the thing is, as well, this game... Is it like Road Rash? No, this game is always a game that I always thought was really, really popular. I spoke to a couple of people Skitching. who, who no, who play Mega Drive, and they were like, "Oh, I haven't heard of this." And so I thought maybe this is a hidden gem. I think most people who collect Mega Drive will know, but if you're on the periphery of Mega Drive, this is a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant game to get. Is a syndicate? No. Dang it! It's a mm, it's an isometric action game with a bit of. 90s chewed twister. Mm. Just give it to us, give it to us, give it to us. You'll know it's what this is. It's gonna be a space George. game, you'll it? know what this is, George. You know your Sega. Am I gonna is... am I gonna go off my face in a minute? Shall I show you? I've got it here. Shall I show you first and then say it to the uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Haunting. Oh, I want to know what that game was. That game is that I I actually enjoyed that game. Yeah, this game is a haunt and star and polter guy. That's actually cool. really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a brilliant yeah. game. Also, it game plays really well. Hang, hang, really hang on well. a minute. Let me what? just cut to the chase here. How much is this? Well, there's a twist to this as well. This <laughs> I game... knew we had his pants down. No, 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 no. You haven't. I've got a really good twist. You just calm oh. down there, little espresso boy. <laughs> right? <laughs> espresso boy. <laughs> Fizzy pop. Right? This You can pick this. Fizzy <laughs> <clears throat> pop. Right, serious, serious, right. This game, you can pick up. If you, if, you, if you go well, you can get this game 20 bucks, 20 to 40 bucks, right? But this game, if you've got a PSP, this game is on EA Replay. 
It is. So which can, I've got. And you can pick that up for about five to ten pounds. You can play it on a PSP for pretty cheap. And that's a decent version of that. That as well. EA replay Plus, needs talking about because it's yeah, got the full version of Wing Commander One on it as well. Yes, yeah, it's got it's got fourteen titles on there. Desert that's Strike. Titles. Yeah, I think Syndicate's on there. Yeah, you know, there's, there's a lot of good games. If you've got PSP. a PSP and you don't have that, then you need it. Yes, definitely for what price it is. But anyway, yeah, Paul Guy, uh, you're a punk teenager who died in a faulty skateboard accident um, by a company who's owned by Vito Sardini, who's a bit of a dodgy businesser, businessman. So you seek revenge by haunting his family and trying to get him to uh, get out of his house. There's four houses you have to haunt them out of. Um, but there's there's three different like items to scare them. So you can do you can do ones which automatically just triggers you go past. You can do ones where you can hide in a wall and jump out. Then there's other ones where you can activate things that will go after them. Like you can um, you can uh, possess a sofa and that'll come out like a growl at them and run after them, scare them out of the room. And they have scare meters. And once you've scared them out of the house, you have to get all four members of the family out before you move on to the next house. Um, you have your own. Um, ectometer. So once your ecto runs out, then you drop into the underworld where you can collect it, build your ecto back up to use scares again. Um, there's 400 different objects in this game you can interact with, so there's plenty of different things you can do. Um, it's really well animated, looks really nice, graphically very impressive for the Mega Drive. And I still think that between 20 to 40 bucks, that's still a good price for what Mega Drive games go for. Um, and also, um, I think there is a two-player version where you're taking turns scaring people but even if you played a one-player game with a group of people and taking turns that's great fun great sound effects and uh it is i know i say this a lot but it is something a bit different a ghost game made by ea on the sega mega drive so, so how uh, yeah. much is the standard game on mega drive if you wanted to put it in your collection without oh, ea so replay without ea that's 20 to 40 bucks you can pick that up for i thought it was on the higher side you know nowadays mm-hmm. it's it's well, that's that's it's an elusive even, game as well. It's not it's interesting to it somewhere unique. and see it. Mm. And also 20, 20 to 40 bucks is not really a high, on the higher side for Mega Drive at the moment. Mega Drive games are creeping again. Well, a lot most games are at the moment. But I mean, but you can pick up EA Replay for... You, you, you're done well if you get it for five bucks. You can probably pick it up on average eight to ten bucks for EA Replay. And then you get 14 games on your PSP, which play really well. And you've got Portland Star and Pokemon on it. Before I we that's a that's a brilliant hidden gem by the way an absolute Thank classic you. from you. Um, Thank you. Baby. Before we head into the news, I have got this little bit of news. When the word fizzy pop echoed round in my brain, <laughs> and the word the word fizzy kind of rattled a few drawers in my brain on the way round, and what I would say about the word fizzy pop now I've put it into the full context, as seeing as you brought it up, RGT. Mm-hmm. When you're stood to attention downstairs. Oh no. You call that a fizzy? Mm-hmm. Well, now I, I just say if something makes me happy, I get fizzy. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, what? Why when you describe the fizzy pop as our word for soda, you did make me think that's got a few dark connotations. I mean, Horn and Star and Portal Guy is good, really good. I'm not sure if it's made me exclamation marks fizzy. <laughs> Mrs. RGT's listening in now. She's like, yeah, you're not the one who has to deal with this fizzy pop. It's uh, <laughs> it's time for the news. It's got the very darkest region of the internet to bring you the latest stories. First up, now this is a mouth sandwich, so I'll take a bite on it. Performance anxiety hits Square. There are the slightest rumbles beginning to emerge that Square Enix is worried about the pre-release numbers, despite an aggressive marketing campaign which has seen producer Naoki Yoshida jetted around the world and a lot of gameplay footage shared with fans. Writing as part of a Patreon post, journalist Imran Khan sees a little insight into what he's been hearing behind the scenes. I heard recently that Square Enix is panicking slightly over Final Fantasy XVI pre-order numbers, which are tracking behind Final Fantasy XV even accounting for the less number of launching platforms, he wrote, before stressing that pre-orders are only an indication of guaranteed day one sales and the actual number could blow everyone away. This comes after the publisher bizarrely decided to move some unexpected updates on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth this week. I wonder what they wanted to remind people the next chapter of Final Fantasy VII Remake's trilogy exists and give it more marketing time than they had planned, Khan continued. The initial sales of Remake were quite good, 
but it slowed down faster than Square Enix seemed to expect, so I imagine they really want Rebirth to sell as well as possible. This follows an interview Yoshida gave to a Japanese online talk show weekly, Okaike, <laughs> Okaye, which he joked that he wouldn't want to look at the first week's sales of Final Fantasy XVI. He was speaking specifically about the Japanese market and added that he laid out plans for sales that would last 18 months. He continued as Trace translated over on a Reddit post and made a simple approach to try and get the shop to convince gamers to get Final Fantasy XVI together with their PlayStation 5 purchase. We feel like reviews are going to have a huge impact on Final Fantasy XVI sales because it's launching in the shadow of some huge titles like Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom and Diablo 4. There's no question that Square Enix is banking on the growth of the series outside of Japan and Sony's marketing muscle would help the release find new fans in Western territories, but it'll be interesting to see if the if they can meet the published expectations, especially now they're beholden to a single platform. Let me throw it open to you. Um, Seb. Triple S. Triple S. What's your thoughts on this? Was Final uh, Fantasy a multi-platform beast that could dominate everything in its wake, or is there an issue here with Final Fantasy 16 being more of an exclusive title? Should they be worried, or is it going to be, do you know what, it's going to be okay, bro? It's really going to be okay. I mean, it it just kind of like, there's a whole lot of micro issues dealing here. Like, first of all, the medieval style isn't quite like as appealing to a lot of people as Final Fantasy VII once was. It also is a brand new entry into the franchise. You add that to the equation. It is also a PS5 exclusive. PS5 hasn't necessarily been out in the wild uh, for a whole lot of people to actually grab onto. It has a select audience there. And then, like, on the Xbox side of things, I know, like, I talked to some actual game in- gaming insiders and such like that. They said the amount is probably the exact amount that the- that they turned down from Xbox, That being they-, they being Square, as far as, like, the amount that they probably feel like is the deficit here. So, but the qu- the thing is, is, like, that number isn't necessarily big. If you look at Final Fantasy 15, it didn't just necessarily set- sell gangbusters on the Xbox side of things. So... You know, it's it's one of those days where this game is going to be all right. Sure, they want to hit like platinum as soon as the game comes out. That's probably one a realistic expectation to begin with, considering how stacked the lineup has been and also the release date window that that this game is also coming out. You know, you also didn't list Street Street Fighter in that amongst that, you know, amongst that list. But Street Fighter is also huge in the same demo as as this game. So it's sort of like all these audiences of different games are sort of like kind of capitalizing and also mar- like marginalizing each other. So, you know, this game probably should have been a fall release and I think it would have did a little bit better, but all overall and all in all, like final fantasy six, like 16, I expect to have longevity sales more so than initial like boomer sales numbers at the gates. This isn't going to be like Tears of the Kingdom where it did like 10 million in three days. I don't think anyone expected that, nor should they, to be honest. Okay. Bobby, you're famously not into turn-based RPGs. Have you tried these actual action Final Fantasy takes or no? Did you try no, the last and only Final Fantasy I have played was the original. Wow. Oh, wow. Mm. I have no I think you'd like Final Seven, Fantasy. like the Seven remake. No, no yeah. interest. I looked oh. at it. Don't like the style. What about 15? No, not for me. I'm not really, I'm not a Final Fantasy. I'm not into turn-based stuff a lot, really. Um, But I did start the remake of 7, and it is it is good. I just, I've got to get my brother law to help me, because I didn't quite understand the magic side of it and the <laughs> sub-menus. But the actual oh, wow. game itself, the set and, and the and the actual game is, yeah, I want to play that game. It's really good. So I, I can see myself playing 16 again. What makes me sort of interested by this news piece is they're actually starting to panic a little bit. Now, obviously, studios have to put money behind games, and normally it's an ascending sort of line. You know, they've spent X on this, they've spent X on Y, therefore, if they spend X on 16, then the 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 equation spits out that they should see Y as a return. I should say this panic probably results in the fact that they don't see the pre-order numbers, which gave them the sort of comfort that they got from 15. But I think... Overall, I think Seb's point about it being a new universe and a 15 with its boy band stylings and driving around in a car did have a wider slew of people that could maybe be interested in it. Mm. And it was, you know, the first new take on the genre that they'd 
executed. 16 is going to double down on the the systems, but obviously provide us with a new world and characters. Um, I'm excited for it. I'm kind of probably not as excited as I thought I would be, especially with its imminent release. Um, well, I, I also think, I mean, Seb's right. I think the obviously it's a PS5 exclusive, so the size of your your base there is going to be smaller anyway. But I also it think it's a, it's a change in climate. You know, games are seventy bucks plus now. If you want, if you want, you know, the main special editions. You know, with all the you know bits and pieces added to there, they're a hundred bucks. So I think combined with the two, people are a bit more careful when they spend there. I think you see a bit more spike in game sales once the game's initially out for the first few weeks. The reviews start rolling back, and then they think, "Oh, it is a good game. I will spend seventy bucks on it." So I think you'll see an up an uptake on that once it's been out two, three, maybe four weeks, and then you. That's then what you'll I'm see, saying. Longevity sales. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. You know, people are just a bit more careful when they where they spend their, their pennies at the moment. Yeah, I mean, yeah, to double down on that point, it's like the long, like this game's going to do well longevity wise. And then, like, as RGG is saying, like, there's so many games that people are spending $70 on right now. Like, mm. um, Diablo, for instance, is one that just released. Like, you, um, and that was $100. I'm talking about $100 if you bought yeah. it like a couple of days ago. And then you also had like Street Fighter, which is another $70 title. People got ripped off with Tears of the Kingdom for $70. And then you also had like, <laughs> Like people got ripped off with seventy dollars from Tears of the Kingdom. Still you know? riding that pony. The the only thing, and like they also probably got ripped off a little bit by uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. You know, as as this as this launch date and such like that for seventy dollars. It's like back to back to back to back seventy dollar titles here, and you know, like it adds up. Something's gonna have to be marginalized. Like something has like something has to kind of like be minimized in the sense to where like not everybody's going to eat like they expected to and Mm -hmm. i think you know the release window matters look at horizon like horizon would have done well if it was released like the year before it it came out it's just like it released in a bad window like it was in the shade of of elden ring and the one and the horizon zero dawn was in the shade of um breath of the wild it's like you have to pick your release date carefully Mm -hmm. and i think that that also plays a factor here Mm, okay gentlemen um which one of you wants to volunteer for this next piece of news? I'm happy to read if you like. Go on then. Dancing in the moonlight again. Last month, we reported on a newly registered website domain for something called P, the P5T. Yeah. Said domain matched up with the previous uh, registrations for Persona Publisher and Developer Atlas, leading to a lot of speculation with regards to a potential Persona 5 related announcement. As noted in our first article, a new domain registration doesn't necessarily mean that a game reveal is incoming, but it's starting to look like there really is something to P5T after all. Spotted by at MBKKSSTBHZ5 on Twitter. That is a name. That's your that handle. That is a name, that, yeah. That, that's impressive. I wonder if you have to pronounce it. Careful. Careful. What? You come out as anything that you need to be careful. <laughs> I dodged a few bullets there. Um, on Twitter, reported by Persona Central, the domain was actually updated on 2nd of June. Apparently, this kind of update has occurred multiple times in the past, almost always ahead of an imminent Persona announcement. Previous things suggest that a reveal might be coming within the next couple of weeks, which means that Summer Games Fest could be the venue. It's certainly an interesting find, but are you sold on the idea of another Persona 5-based adventure? Wonder what the heck it could actually be in the world's best Discord. Um, That's ours, of course, if you weren't sure. (laughs) Do we need to see another Persona 5 spin-off? Or is it going to be okay now for us to move on? Because I feel like Persona 5 has, has long outstayed its welcome, if I'm honest. What about Persona 6? Have they ever spoke about Persona 6? I mean, well, it's, and We know it's in development, but they haven't exclusively okay. announced it yet. And in yeah. the meantime, oh, okay. they normally kind of do the dancing games and all the other sort of spin-off games, yeah. strikers games, all that sort of stuff. Now, this has been milked. To think that they're going to try and extract one last drop of milk out of this, that cow looks like a withered husk, but I'm sure if they squeeze hard enough, they might be able to get a little bit of white liquid out of it. A fizzy pop, as one might say. Mm. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, probably me and Seb are about the only people that might be mildly interested in this news. And I'm not, I'm, I'm, the only reason it's here is I'm shocked. Actually, I'm shocked. What I would say to them is don't waste any more time trying to squeeze any more milk out and just give us some six information, please. What Grand Theft Auto 5 does all the time. I was about to say Skyrim did it to, to death. Yeah. They put mm-hmm. it they put it in cars for cool. Nintendo does it every single week. I was about to say Nintendo does it at any chance they get. They sneeze and do it. But is this <laughs> someone's gonna oh, buy it? Oh, someone's buy gonna buy another Metroid. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's true. He's not feeling Nintendo at the moment, is he? <laughs> No. That's all Nintendo does. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. you're right, yeah. Put a new title on it. He's now the time to announce at the American office from next week and they're going to be doing a Switch show every week. <laughs> Switch this <laughs> off, bro. <laughs> Switch <laughs> off, yes. Switch <laughs> off. That's what it could be called. Switch this Switched off. off. Switched off. Unbelievable. Well, uh, it's a bag on the Switch for 35 minutes. <laughs> okay, well... <laughs> <laughs> Other Switch shows are available. <laughs> no, they aren't. <laughs> okay. Uh, this next bit of news. Uh, Bobby, why don't you hit me up with this? Uh, Microsoft looking for more expansion. Uh, we're definitely starting to get a few leaks ahead of the Xbox Game Showcase uh, for 2023. Uh, now with this last one appearing to suggest that two Western digital expansion cards will be announced on the day of the event, uh, which is June 11th. This information has been shared by well-known leaker Bibli Kuhn Hun, on Twitter, um, who says that these cards will be available in 512 GB and 1 TB forms, complete with one month of Xbox Pass Unlimited as well. In terms of pricing, it suggested that the 512 GB version will retail for $79.99, and the 1 TB version will uh, for $149.99, which is pretty much the same as the Seagate variants, although the 512 GB Western Digital version is slightly cheaper. Uh, this isn't exactly the first time we heard of Western Digital making an expansion card for Xbox Series X or Xbox Series S, as Best Buy accidentally leaked the 1 TB version back in April. Now, obviously, mm. this is this this expansion card scenario with the Xbox has always been sort of interesting to me because normally proprietary ex- memory expansions are not that well received so the fact that they've they're now sort of diversifying this i find actually quite interesting Mm. is this obviously i've got a series x with a 512 i think it's 512 tucked in the back of it gives a little bit of extra breathing room um is this way was this proprietary expansion card scenario a wrong move versus the PS5's sort of DIY mode, or is this actually the cleaner example and actually they're actually driving the price down anyway? Um, RGT, what's your thoughts on this? Um, I don't know. Originally, I thought um, Sony had gone the right route because by making it an open source for people to make these cards, the price is naturally going to come down because they're competing against each other for the, for the sales. But then, you know, this way, especially if they're adding in um, Games Pass and bits and pieces with it, you can really see where they're trying to get to people and say, look, buy the one terabyte, we'll give you this, give you and, and get special deals in. Whereas mm. obviously them deals are hard on Sony to do because it's, you know, it's an open market, so everyone's doing these bits and pieces. So it's hard, it's hard for them to tie anything in. So, yeah, it's an interesting one. Um, and I think like, a lot of the expansion cards has gone under the radar a bit, but now... We're getting into the life cycle, part, coming up halfway through a life cycle of the console. People are starting to realise you need them. They're an important part of, of having these consoles nowadays. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a good idea to actually make them more attractive to actually purchase one. So, yeah, I think fair play, Microsoft, is a good idea. Mm, okay. Uh, I, you know, this sort of echoed around in my mind when I saw it because obviously – to those that aren't on the Discord yesterday, Gaming Graham was updating his PlayStation 5 and sheared off the retaining screw. Um, unfortunate look, one would say. I know it's all sorted now and everyone breathed a sigh of relief and it's all, that's fixed, great. Another reason why uh, the Discord was good because he, he put up his heartfelt agony and everyone sort of was commiserating him. Some were offering sort of advice and, and a little bit of guidance. Ultimately, I think he had to take it to work and, and get a bigger boy to have a look at it for him. But 
you know, it was done. Mm-hmm. And he's he's back in the game and he showed us his swollen space, obviously, that he now has an extra terabyte or three. I can't remember what grade he went for. Um, but this is simply you unbox it and you slot it straight in the back like a memory card. Uh mm-hmm. Seb, you've got a Series X. Have you expanded your storage or no? I have a Series S and X, so I have both. It's one of those things to where, like, I, you know, I think to to answer the initial question, I don't think this is a bad move by Microsoft at all. Like, I think they were playing the long game here. It was like, at the time, they were, like, they made this card thinking that the market for these hard, for these hard drives, especially considering, like, at, at first, like, with these MD, like with the speeds and everything that we were getting with that wouldn't probably go down um, for a very long time right now. Right now, they're kind of like playing a reactionary game to like the prices are very much skyrocketing downwards uh, as far as like the these hard drives being more affordable. But like it's more convenient for them as well, considering how like they made the insides of both systems to actually have the drive like this. And it's also more convenient for the for the player. I I haven't expanded it personally. I don't see the need for it. Um, most of the time, I play either digitally for the most part now and nowadays, and I also play with like the um, cloud gaming aspect. So I don't actually need to actually you know expand everything out. And a lot of the big boy games that I play that are on the larger side, I just kind of manage those out personally. But yeah, I don't I don't think this is a bad move at all. I think this is two different philosophies. Both of them have kind of like a really good you know like a really good logic and reasoning behind it you know it just kind of depends on what which one you prefer over the other mm, okay bobby we know that you've uh, locked dropped and rocked your ps5 very early in its life cycle as well you you ripped that bad boy clean open and and stuck a new hard drive in there now obviously gaming gram had some misfortune but was it difficult no it was pretty easy um I don't know if you had the right screwdriver, but I have those little small like, for the eyeglasses, precision ones. Yeah. So, I mean, I just opened it pretty quickly and put it in. And it was, I mean, it was easy. It was hard to open up the, open the PS5, to be honest. Mm. I was scared to break it. But then once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy to open up that it, it, Yeah, it's once you let go of fear, everything becomes yeah. very easy. I put, I put the LED lights in there and I got an extra fan and everything. Mm. So yours is pimped. Yeah. It's pimped out, yeah. That's not, it looks like something Darth Vader would play on. It looks mm-hmm. like the sort of thing Triple S would yeah. use as an armrest. I have the, the low profile. <laughs> I don't have the, the big wings and anything. It has like the fan. It's pretty nice. Oh, you've put it on the diet as well. Okay, mm-hmm. right. Well, yeah. I've still yet to fiddle around with the insides of my PS5. I've probably been toying with the idea of getting one of those WD black ready to rock and roll with the... I think that's something the PlayStation... Yeah, that's what I got. Probably, I got that one. Yeah, I think that's the thing that PlayStation struggled with, though, because you obviously can get those those card HDDs uh, from from all sorts of different manufacturers, but some come with the heat sink, some don't. So it's just holding on till you find one that's just simply just yeah, plug and play. Yeah, for sure. yeah. yeah, definitely. And I think that that makes a big difference and it, it probably make me feel a little bit less nervous when I'm sort of ramming things in the, the back door of my very expensive console as was, or maybe still is. I don't even know anymore. Uh, okay, gentlemen, um, last readout. Who hadn't had a go in the driver's seat? Uh, Triple S at the Fur K Corporation. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Oh, he's putting on his glasses before he can read anything out. He needs to probably well, yeah, engage his microphone. You got to use that, that blue hue on the computer screen. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> give give me chocolate. We've known for just some time. Just because this is an there's... audio show, can we just let everyone know that you stepped back from your mic to begin reading you put on a, sh- a pair of purple sunglasses? I don't feel worthy, I'm honest. I feel out of my And then and only then was he ready, did he read out his, his bit of the news? Hmm. This is the sort yeah. of celebrity we're dealing with here now. I'll read when I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> don't you cue me i will yeah. read when i'm ready to read so you know for everyone's <laughs> information these aren't just any glasses or anything these are the competitive bnc formula glasses they are specifically gaming glasses that kind of like help you mentally focus during competitions or other intense like 
concentration kind of like gameplay moments so so like you play these when you want to play games like Elden Ring Bloodborne or even like something highly competitive like y'all people who play these Fortnite games you know like I, I don't I don't understand you Fortnite gamers but for the people who are you know I get you I get you go ahead but get these glasses <laughs> But um, I digress. <laughs> I, I digress. Um, so for our next story, give me chocolate. We know for some time now there's a Stardew Valley version 1.6 on the way, and it seems that the creator Eric Concerned Ape Ron has now teased some new information. In an update on social media, the indie game developer simply shared a message mentioning Iridium Scythe. And it's sent many fans into a frenzy. I don't know why. What was what's up with these two words that they send well, people into a frenzy? All I'll say is for me, is Epoch. Okay. Oh, uh, you're RGT. You're the you're the wow. You're the Stardew Valley guy. Is this like this is a big deal, right? Yeah. Yeah. It is, uh, yeah. Okay. I just yeah. I'm just curious. Is okay. It like, back to the story. Is it like an indestructible scythe? Is that what we're saying here? Yeah. You can. I'm not going to get boring there. You're going to start your order. Well, let's you... let Seb finish. Yeah, and then, and then... We'll, we'll get the update on on what you're getting fizzy popped about. Okay, so <laughs> wrapping up the story here, th- this is currently the only tool in the game that can't be upgraded to the highest tier. If this is what fans suspected, it's exciting news to finally be able to have a full set of purple items. <laughs> Presumably, it would How drop. Ironic. A- <laughs> the big 1.6 update although it is unclear when exactly this next major update will arrive baron also has taken time off of his new game the haunted chocolate <laughs> to develop this new patch for stardew i want to start with rgt rgt what is this news can you make sense of all this uh well basically when you have you played stardew no, 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 no. Um, no, well, you, when, when, you, when you start the game, you have, like, an axe. You have a, this steady here. This is what we call it in the UK. You have an axe, a hoe. You have a... <laughs> you have a scythe. Um, and you have a um, watering can. And you can, as you upgrade your farm, you can make <laughs> metals. You can make the metals into bars. You can then upgrade your tools so that when you're, say, using your hoe, you can... Oh, <laughs> oh my. When you're, when you're hoeing, <clears throat> you can, where you'd normally hoe one square, if you've upgraded it to, say, a copper hoe, you could do three squares. If you've upgraded to a silver hoe, you could do five squares. If you've upgraded to a gold hoe, well, the, the sky's the limit. But if, obviously, with a <laughs> with iridium hoe, you can... You can hoe to your heart's content. <laughs> oh. It just means a bigger area you can clear without using too much energy. But the scythe, you couldn't upgrade to that. And he's now done. That's what everyone always wanted, was the scythe to be upgraded as much as all the rest of them. So that's you can now max, you can now max the, the scythe out. So you'll be able to cut like grass in a bigger area with one swipe rather than rather than just clear one little area. Oh. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so how many hoes was that? Um, well, you can upgrade your hoe. You can go from okay. a standard hoe to a copper hoe to a silver hoe to a gold hoe, and then the best hoe is, a, is the iridium <laughs> purple hoe. The weird thing is, I was, it was beautiful outside yesterday, and I was in the garden, and I thought, do you know what? You need a hoe. Yeah, I'm going to use a hoe. So I did. Went through, huh. pulled out some weed. Job sorted. You needed well, you needed some weeds in England. Holes in New York are two different things. I I don't know if they are anymore. I don't even know what we're talking about. I woke up in what I thought was a conversation about gardening. And I, I think we're still talking about gardening, right? I mean, you're the Farmville expert. Listen, the farming games I play don't have any hose in, pal. They just have deep plows. What's a farming game if it don't it got some good holes in it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> isn't that like that seventy five percent of farming is hoeing? Well, we would say that's more gardening is a hoe. Oh, know. okay, my bad, my bad. I'm not, I'm not used you, to you, the... you're small fry if you're playing around with hoes. Oh, okay, got gotcha, you. Gotcha, I see gotcha. you now. Uh-huh. Yeah, got gotcha. you. Farming ain't easy, player. It ain't. 
<laughs> Farming ain't easy. Do you know, mm. I, you know, it's probably the most bizarre moment in my life when I'm looking at a dude in a red robe with purple sunglasses on telling me farming ain't easy. <laughs> farming ain't easy, brother. Yeah. And I'm normally <laughs> sat here, <laughs> have that. I'm normally have sat that. here in dungarees with a Case New Holland hat on or something like that. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh. Anyway. Okay. Well, that probably draws a line under underneath there. I think we're still a PG <laughs> show, but I don't know. I don't even know anymore. Um, we've just been talking about the hose and the farming, right? Absolutely right. Covered yeah, exactly. in fizzy pop. Making seeds. Yeah. Growing mm-hmm. them, expanding them. Oh, hang on a minute. Park, reverse. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Slip your flam down, flick it and reverse it. Wait. I have a question. Before, <laughs> before we get into community corrections. Ginge. Harvey Retro. And I presume the gaming gram. Active on the Discord, but I'm presuming RGT mm-hmm. is community liaison. You haven't made sure they've got UCP fridge magnets. No, I didn't realise I was had another title now as well. But okay, yeah. So, uh, the list Gentlemen, is bigger. Hit RGT up with your home address, and he'll get them out to your ASAP. Yep. I think oh, it's only right and proper. Yes. Um, they're wonderful people. And if, got a couple, you know, I've got a couple of designs as well, so you can pick from the old artwork to the new artwork. Pick which ones you want. Then. OG. Yeah. OG. Interesting. OG how, many, how many titles do you have, RGT? Can you list out some of them? Oh, you better ask George out. Cause no, I don't want to do this on air, because if one of them's even slightly better than some of the ones that Triple S has got, I'll be embroiled in another six-week-long legal campaign with the <laughs> K Corporation, and I can't afford to protect my own show again. Yeah, I'm though, if, down. if I'm having all these titles, I want a pair of them shades, and I want one of them robes. You see you what know. you started, Triple S? Yeah. You see what you started? Yeah. You know... All I'm- all I'm saying is farming ain't easy, and I understand what you're going through, man. Like, I, and I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get your hopes up. But the Fur K Corporation has taken notice of your RGT. That's all I'm gonna say right now. Thank you. Oh so wow, it's so gonna be me and Amazonian Tom all yeah, over so, again, isn't it? So, do you think maybe George should start, you know, giving me a few? incentives for my titles otherwise i might be lost to the third dude up until operation. this point the titles <laughs> were the incentive to the titles that's why i was throwing them around oh. like confetti at a wedding and you'd still weren't happy oh just uh yeah anyway seb just oh sorry triple s just uh text me um for case number will you i'll just i'll have my people get on to you I like lovely that. thank you just, all right i'll just run a few things past Do, him, so. has anyone here got could i have fur case number no you, you are you get, you've got you, tom's you. number <laughs> Tom. No, all I've got is a parrot that's underfed because it's flown here all the way from the Amazon. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Carry a parrot. And only the on a Bengal. <gasps> a Bengal tiger. What? what did I hear? I sorry. I said with a tracking device on his ankle. Much <laughs> <laughs> <I was gonna laughs> like, like his owner is out on tag. <laughs> <laughs> We need we need a good hoe because this show has gotten off to the weeds, everyone. So <sighs> yeah, let me yeah. give the ground a good rub and tuck, as I say. Did we uh, community corrections? I think we're clear. I don't actually, actually, no. I think there was a community correction. Mm. I don't know why I've done this to myself, but I, I have. So much as a correction, as a bit of information. I think is that actually a correction? Was it the game on Graham? I the gaming Graham. Put me right. Last week I mentioned the Excel Wrestling um, spreadsheet management game, uh, and he corrected me and said it's called Total Extreme Wrestling, and the first one was called Extreme Warfare Revenge. If you're into spreadsheets oh, and looking around, making up stories for yourself, and putting building your own fantasy wrestling leagues, uh, that's the game to look out. It's very basic, but it's very enjoyable. I do believe you mentioned to me that they brought out a re-released version on Steam. So if you're even mildly interested in professional wrestling, it's one to have a look at. Uh, I don't know how well it holds up nowadays, but certainly some of the detailed aspects of controlling the the, the matches and how things were going to play out was, was certainly well received. So, yeah, it says community creation, more like community assistance. Yes. Care in the community. Uh, so question is, 
Did we miss anything? Do you have an opinion or take on the news we missed? If so, let me close my eyes. Bobby, how would the collected masses get to interact with us? They could reach us at questions at unofficialcontrollerpodcast.com. They can DM us on Instagram and Twitter. And if you would like to, in those links, in the Twitter and Instagram, there's a link to the Discord. Join that bad boy. I mean, that's where the real action goes down. Yeah, if you want to does. get yourself a freebie, if you want to get yourself a fridge magnet, a blankety blank checkbook and pen, and possibly a signed copy of RGT's version of The Haunting, if you're the tenth member to join the Discord today. Oh yeah, I just give your stuff away as well. Yeah, yeah. The second week, you're trying to give away my collection. <laughs> no, your PS5 is the long game. If you've got a million followers by Christmas, it's it's being sacrificed. Well, if if we're going to be giving away every hidden gem I do every week, I'm starting with FIFA, and I'm just going to go through every copy of FIFA <laughs> every week because they're like ten pence in the charity shop. So I'll just stuck up one of them and go from there. I will rebuy you the haunting. <laughs> yeah. I will. Is this? Oh, hang on. This you're worried about fur Kai, aren't you? I don't want you leaving to go <coughs> start up a rival, and it would be like the UCP as well, like the unusually shaped, the unusual controller podcast. I can see that's how that's going to go, <laughs> and you're going to be in like a Hollywood swimming pool, swimming for a Mega Drive controller, and that's going to be the album art. Controller podcast unofficial. <laughs> <laughs> The CPU, it yeah. works even better because it's about video game. Yeah. Oh. Okay. With that all said and done, I think most people turned up um, to. Oh, I will just add actually with Discord. If you do join your Discord, check because me and George are at the Timeless Gaming Convention in Bury, Greater Manchester on the 16th of August. Um, we're going to be involved in a panel on the stage. And also, you might see us do another few other shenanigans on the stage. Um, but we have an affiliate link, which I'll keep reposting because obviously it gets lost in the in the chatter a bit. But I'll keep reposting our affiliate link. And if you want to go to that, buy a ticket for our affiliate link. You automatically go straight into a draw for a big prize, which you'll go up on stage and collect for free. You'll automatically be put on it just by going in our affiliate well, link. Well, just to help people understand the concept of that, last year, it was a PlayStation 5 and Horizon yes. Forbidden West. So yeah, we're not mucking the around here. No, we are. And you're in that for mucking. free. You are in that draw for free by just buying through our affiliate link. So, so join the Discord. Mm-hmm. Click the affiliate link. Mm-hmm. Win something equidistant to a PS5 and one of the biggest games out. Yeah, and also check out because we had Mags on the show the other week, um, middle aged gamer guy. He is the guy behind um, him and Amy. They are the people behind. Um, timeless gaming convention. It is held in one of the best arcade clubs in the country, if not the best arcade club in the country, which is the arcade club in Berry. So you'll have all the machines to play. It's over three or four floors. There'll be other co creators there and podcasts there. There'll be competitions and events. Check it out. May I also add excellent Uber service in Manchester? I've just come back from there, having mm-hmm. had some shenanigans. And it was absolutely awesome. Mm. Town was clean, <laughs> smart. The bars were cool, well priced. Yeah, yep. great place to be. So if you're in and around the area, make a couple of days of it. I know yep. I am. And if you yep. want to yep. tag on the George train, probably tucked up in bed at eleven with a cup of hot chocolate, courtesy of the travel lodge. You know how to live. And also, there's a, there's a couple of the guys in the Discord are uh, thinking of going. Um, I think they'd like to go if they could meet up and go in a group. So get on there if you don't want to go on your own. There's other people that you can meet up en route, come together in a little convoy. And yeah, let's have a let's have a bit of a U, bit of a UCP meet up at the Timeless Gamer Convention. Now this you, sounds like a place I could take the jet to. Yeah, you could have the helicopter. <laughs> yeah. Now that George, yeah. you you kind of sold me on that. You Manchester this sounds Airport. like a place I could get the yeah. jet we, up for. Yeah, yeah oh, we yeah. can helicopter you into the roof of the building. Yeah. Yeah, be I've been grinding away on this for years. Closest thing I've got to a jet is a broken gas boiler. <laughs> or your PS4. When you... <laughs> yeah, I'm about to say, <laughs> a PS4 Pro. He kind of sounded similar. Um, 
but yeah, let's uh, yeah, give it a check. If there's any questions you've got about Tyler's Game Convention or anything you don't know, hit me up on the Discord. Come join Discord, hit me up, DM me if there's anything you want to know about it or where the link is or people that you can speak to who are going. Ask me any questions you want, anything you want about it, and I will uh, I'll do what I can to help. Mm, okay. Well, sounds like it's going to be an exciting adventure for uh, us and the community. So, you know, we'll see you there, guys, and uh, looking forward to it. Don't forget mm. to join the Discord if you're not in it. And if you're in it, click that affiliate link and get yourself a special bonus prize. I might even see if I'll it's get over difficult. to do a separate part just with the affiliate link in the separate section. So Good I'm idea. There all the time, yeah. So leave it with me, and I'll, I'll get something put up. Okay. Hi, Bo Baloba, the immortal Discord community manager. It's all coming together. I mean, there's more people on the payroll now than uh, I don't know, Royal Mail. So I think we're doing all right. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, okay. Well, you came here, listener, because you saw something that was search engine optimized to bring you here, and it's about the Xbox Showcase and why it must. And it must, in our humble opinion as gaming podcasters, deliver. Now, obviously, recently, we've had uh, some releases that haven't, you know, quite hit the high points. Microsoft were maybe expecting. And that's led people in the industry to start speculating about how this showcase really has to bring the goods. Now, gentlemen. RGT. Yep. Why must this showcase to deliver? And what are you hoping to see there that would qualify as delivering in your humble opinion? Um I think for me, I mean, we we know that we know how the sales and bits and pieces are going between Xbox and PlayStation at the moment. Xbox, they've been struggling with their exclusives. Redfall has just been a complete disaster. They need something big. And also, I think you look how people hit on PlayStation for their last showcase. Um, I mean, we all thought that was okay, didn't we? We thought it was good. But anything under an 8 or 9 out of 10 nowadays is classed as a failure in the showcase. Mm. You need at least half end games to be absolute bangers. So if, if Sony and PlayStation got absolutely slaughtered for that, if Xbox isn't up to it with their current situation, it's going to be a hard time for them at the moment. But I, th- I think they know that. I think that I've, I've got a funny feeling this is going to be decent. I think we're going to see more Starfield. And like I've said all along, I haven't got my, the, the only, the last Xbox I've got is Xbox One. If there's a few games I'd like to play on Xbox, I think if Starfield is a big game and really that good, I, that would make me buy an Xbox. So I think it's how important that game is. Snap, that's got the potential, I think, to turn heads. If that's yeah. an absolute gangbanger, that will be a that will be a console shift in Behemoth. And if they yeah. haven't worked that out yet, one well, it'll be it'll be what what's five band was to PS4. That's what it, it'll be. But the thing is with Starfield, it's got a mature more mature connotations to it as well. So in a way, it's got the ability to probably spread to a deeper, more ingrained adult audience. Yeah, and also I think if if they've just copy and pasted Elder Scrolls to space or Skyrim, or whatever, or, you know, I don't think that's going to wash. I think if they've just copy and pasted a version of No Man's Sky that isn't quite as good, that isn't going to wash. I think they need to have the, the click of the two of those games, the essence of two of those games, the exploration and the way you build your worlds and travel your worlds, but have something different. Get players mm. who are playing both those games to say, those games are good, but in Starfield, you can do this, you know. And I think if they get it right, and I honestly do think they will, I think they will with that. And I think they also, a bit like with Hi Fi Rush, I can see them doing a couple of shadow drops in this. I think Ooh, they're going to drop a couple of games. Yeah, I do. Controversial. Because I think they've got to, they, they have to. I mean, Starfield can be, you know, I don't think it can be the savior of the console, but they still need something more. Do you know what I mean? They still need to bring something more to the party and I think they will I think they I know I know there was um, stories that Hi-Fi Rush was a failure because they only had 2 million downloads and it was on Games Pass blah 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 but I still think they need to 
have a couple of games where you where you're not expecting and you'll come in and then suddenly go oh wow oh wow mm. i didn't okay. know they were doing this i didn't know they were doing that okay i'm thinking of getting an xbox now i think okay. that's where they need to head with that um tri- i think triple s wants to pipe in but before he does i just want to put a bit of parenthesis on this obviously you've got right to return there said but one question i've got for you is starfield tucked up in its crib nicely um what else should we expect to see? Oh man, I'm glad you um asked me that question because that's kind of what I was gearing up for. Like the what should we expect to see is going to be a really big um showcase from Xbox. I think we'll see State of Decay to uh, three. I think we'll see a more of that game. Maybe maybe a CGI trailer. Maybe may may I interrupt? What's I up? have it under the radar and pretty pretty high probability. We're gonna get some chunky fable information. I think I think that's guaranteed. I think that's a layup. But yeah, I think I think we're gonna get some um, fable information. I think we're gonna get Indiana Jones. I do think we'll get more of of that game. I think that's we'll get their. All- if I may interrupt again, that's their Spider Man killer. If they execute that correctly, no, no way, no. I don't. The Indiana Jones IP at this point is not it's not as big as Spider Man. It's like I don't, I don't think it'll be a Spider Man killer. I think it can be their spy their version of Spider Man. You know, the one that no one else has got that's got a bit of uh, nostalgia for people with that will sell. To me, if, if that if right, that ends up being okay, you know, I'll I, be there. I yeah, think it's yeah, exactly. their. Yeah. I think it's more so their Uncharted like answer, but like. I also don't think like it'll also do gangbusters on on either side of sales and such like that because like you know the IP it, I don't know if y'all have seen the the movie trackers for Indiana Jones right now has oh, been does that not good. just stir up hunger for something good with that name attached to it it does it really does but it's also one of those things to where I'm like it is one of the like. I don't think Indiana Jones is going to move the needle as much as y'all think it's going to with its IP. Like it's again, not a Marvel property, which is like the biggest franchise in the world at this point. And I do think while there is a strong demographic that is going to really be hyped about Indiana Jones, this game could be a nine out of 10 and still be like mid as far as like the conversation goes, it could come out and still just be, a three week conversation to be just like chewing gum and be over at that point. Mm. It's just the way the IP is, you know, like IP in 2023 is like that game would have to be a 10 out of 10 game of the year contender to overstay it, overstay like a three week conversation. But I um, was hoping an 80 year old Indiana Jones is going to help them and good luck. But see, Bobby, wow. Bobby, Bobby wow. Crudely said it right, but he's right there. I'm like, Indiana Jones is not an IP that I think is going to translate well into the 2023 landscape. Right now, like, an amazing Star Trek game just came out. Like, Star Trek. Amazing. I've been playing that. Oh, it's it's a solid totally game, forgot. right? Mm-hmm. I suppose it depends if it's you a good telltale game. Your console no, it, as well. It's a good telltale game. I know this is off topic, mm-hmm. but let's go here. It's a good telltale game. But how many times have you had dialogue restart? How many times have you had lines fumbled? How many times have you had like animations glitch? Oh, it's janky. No, it's me wrong. totally it's under the radar, the jankiness of it. And I feel if that was included in the reviews, it would have scored even lower. Uh, I'm enjoying it for what it is, but I also find it a little bit... Underbaked? It's, it's not as good as I hoped it would be. And the glitchiness is making me hate it even more. Here, here's my, the point I was going to make with the the Star Trek thing. It's actually got good reviews, though. You know, it like, has. Yeah, it I has would review it well, but I'm just frustrated with it. In, yeah, for those sort of elements of its just weakness in its playtesting, I presume. I don't even know what has resulted in this. The fact that it's multiple, multiple, multiple chores results in like different dialogue starting and editing together. I don't know what the reasons are, but it's messy. I don't know. If- I don't know if you remember, but Telltale games have always been like messy, though. Like, and you know, they always come out with a lot of jank. The Batman games had some some problems with it. The Walking Dead games had problems with it. It's like I I think they should actually learn, um, learn and evolve mm. a little bit before that's they actually what, release more thing games. Is, that's what I expected from this to be. I thought it would be mm. the highest evolution of the Telltale series mm. to this point, unhindered of all previous baggage, able to be recompiled and put out. 
with a new franchise, and it just worked nicely. Um, everything else they've they got nailed. Uh, you know, like I, you know, I want the Telltale games to be like um, a lot of what we saw in um, what was it, Detroit Become Human. I would love to see them hit that level of production value and evolution. Yeah. They're just not up to that level yet. It's like. And unfortunately, you know, like I know that the nature of video games, you have to put out stuff you know, prior to it being 100 percent ready. And this is one of those cases to where they just weren't ready. But anyways, going back to the main point, I, you know, Star Trek was like one of those. I, it's an IP that it was well established almost as, around the same time as Indiana Jones. And it's re- gotten a great reviewed game and it's just not moving the needle like. It's one of those to where I'm like, I could see Indiana Jones being that same thing. It could be extremely well reviewed and still just be a flat conversation starter. But I digress. I expect to also see Forza Motorsport 8 here. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, like that was in the showcase from last year. And we, and you know, it was also under the, where this game will release under 12 months, kind of like propaganda that they put out there that they completely lied about. But like, Hopefully we'll actually see that. I think I expect to see that this fall. I think that'll be their second fall, like been mega hit game, which yeah, is definitely. and then Starfield. And I think this is the the big one. Uh, the big one you talked about Fable there. I expect to see Fable, but I think in, in order for Xbox to capitalize and actually get some buzz going, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw just a teaser of a cinematic trailer announcing Elder Souls uh, 6. Hmm. Yeah, agreed. It would probably do them a favor or three to have something new in the pipeline because these games have been in like a maturation state for probably what feels like three to four years now. So they need to be almost ready to pop. I think also with with how Redfall was and allegedly how Xbox wasn't on the case of the studio so much, they tend to let the studios as they say, be more creative, but obviously they're letting things slide as to where the game is. I think they're re- I think they're gonna learn from Redfall. So I think your fables, your forces, they they're gonna have to double down on these studios now, get more involved, what you got, what's you know, let's see the quality of it, let's see what's in, involved in it, and let's make sure that the let's make sure these games are bangers. If, is if it gonna make them, six months is that year, gonna make them polish these further and therefore take a longer time to bring them out now can i interject real quick um i do like that question george and i'm going to answer that one it's like forza has never been a problem like that game reviews that game reviews hella well and it also is like it's also a premium racing experience some would even say some of the best racing games in the world at this point but like that you don't have to worry about that that studio i think it's more the acquisition studios that you more Mm. have to worry about than anything else like um, but that I'll be, I'll be it. That said, I do expect to also see Ninja Theory bring out Hellblade because we've seen so much of like so much of um Sisinua's um saga Hellblade 2, and that's been in every showcase for like almost the last three years. It's about time yeah. we get a release date for that. That was rumored to be this year, um, or this past year. Hopefully, we'll get that. I do expect to see Obsidian Studios with the Outer Wilds, uh, the Outer Worlds, talk, uh, you know, like. I think they'll bring out the Outer Wars too. I do also expect to see um, one last. I think we'll see. I think we'll see maybe teasers for that because they've recently re you know re released a next gen version of that, haven't they? So maybe to try and remind people of the franchise and recapitalize mm. on the next gen systems, getting an upgrade and downloads. I do think we'll also see the Gears of War collection that's been rumored right now, where it's like the group Gears of War remastered collection, where it's almost like. The Master Chief, Master Chief edition of like all the other games, but with Gears of War, I think we'll see that. Be a good as well. time to bring that out as well. I think just to keep people ticking over if the others are going to be later or next year releases, it'll be good to keep. You know, I think the Gears of War collection. I I don't you know like I hate to bring a damper on this. I don't think we'll see any Shadow Drop games. I think Hi-Fi Rush was in, was it for this year, but I do think like. I do think their fall is still going to be a bit on the weaker side. It's going to be Starfield and probably probably um um forza and i think you go really hard next year and because is there, is there next... a release date for starfield yet there isn't is it yeah it is um oh there is, is a release date yeah there's um starfield is coming out this fall guaranteed um well uh, according to what they've been saying so far yeah, but I, I don't it know has if... it has the release date of september 6th uh, okay sorry yeah i didn't yeah. know there was a confirmed date i didn't know if they dropped that date 
this and year. this is this is rumored. This is what we've been hearing. That is like two weeks before Spider Man. Yeah, is what we've what we've been rumored hearing. It's like so that is one of those things where I think like Starfield, like you said, has to be you know it has to be the creme to the creme. It has to be the prince that was promised. But like we're also um, there's also another studio that I think we could actually see. That's the initiative. They've been working on the Perfect Dark remake. That mm. that is a big um, possibility, and then you know, like everybody was talking about, like Take Ten Studios as what they've been doing with um, the Forza Motorsport series. I do expect to also see World's Edge like show up, and and they're the series that does Age of the Age of Empires because mm. like they show up at, like clockwork, and their games are always highly polished, and they'll probably announce a new what they've been working on a new Age of Empires. Mm. But I digress. Or like Bobby, I know you're not a big Xbox person. Are you excited for the showcase, or you it doesn't move the needle one way or another for you? Uh, not really. I don't really care about the showcases uh, in okay. general. Um, but the only thing I know that they might that to keep everybody happy, like you said, the 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 Forza game is mm-hmm. supposed to be that 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 Fable reboot, which would be nice, and then obviously Starfield. But then what I'm looking forward to, I mean, I think it looks interesting. I mean, I, I can probably never play it. Is that Avowed? Looks pretty interesting. Avowed looks good. We City might in. see more of them. Yeah. So so I think if you have those four games, then that would be nice. Whatever else they're, 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 they have up their sleeve would be good too. Mm-hmm. I just think that they need release dates for some of these games. Yeah, you know, I think I there's been a lot of talk, of, you know, with your perfect darks and your fables. Like when are they coming out? Yeah, and, and 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 the thing is with those as well. A lot I've said before. I find the longer a game is is spoken about, but you get no gameplay footage, you get no release dates. The hype rises for yeah. it. So your t- mm-hmm. your target of you know you could probably release a seven out of ten game if you're on time and you do it within the first year of announcement. Once you start dragging the years on. People start thinking, well, this must be amazing. This has got to be an eight, nine, a 10 out of 10 yeah. game. So your expectation rise, and that's the issue. Let's hope we get some dates. Let's get some, you know, let's get, or at least get some, at least timeline so we know when, when Fables and Perfect Darks mm-hmm. hopefully are going to be releasing, you know. I, I do think y'all, I, I know where y'all coming from. I think it's a disaster to put release dates on most of these things, though. Like, oh, I don't mean so much uh, as a date, but just, just even just like fall or summer something. 24. So like, yeah, they come and, and give us a bit of footage. Because I know? was about to say, unless these things are ready and you know yeah. they're going to hit those dates, like it's all, it's a PR nightmare. Like it, it's like, it can only hurt you at this point. Like, yeah, yeah, but the thing exactly. is, it's like a girl, right? You're, you're like a girl, you, you, you're talking to her, you ask her out, oh, I'm not ready. I had a bad relationship. I need some time. Okay. You're d- dating her and you ask her again. A few months later, I need some more time. I'm not ready. After a while, listen, I I, I want to date you. Don't I gotta go? I I'm understand. Not gonna come back to this. I understand completely. It's just one of those things to where like Starfield had that problem of like, oh, we have this date now. We have this date, and they kept pushing back, and now that game got like m- like minimized because of its release date situation. In well, addition the, to Red- what I would say is this aid old English saying: "There's only one thing worse than being talked about." And that's not being talked about. Mm. And at the moment, they Mm. need to get the hype machine fired up and kick it down the road. So even if they they need to start sharing some stuff to get some footage in what's left of print material, they need to start sharing some stuff so they can get some preview. I mean, there were Starfield trailers a year ago on YouTube, bookending all the content on there. Still nothing. Same with Perfect Dark and Fable. You know, they've spoke about these for years. We're seeing nothing. Show us something. Get the hype train going. Get people talking. Oh, did you see that 20-second trailer, Fable? That looks amazing on the series. Yeah. Even if it's garbage, get it, get at least people going, don't think that... Yeah. No, man. Even if it's garbage, at least people won't think they're suffering from the Mandela effect. And these yeah. things were never actually announced in the first place. You know, the, the crazy thing is, it's like, if it's garbage, though, you, you it's like it damages the brand in a in a way that is almost like irreprehensible. Because like, well, look at my look at Halo Infinite, like with um what happened, with, like when they put out like that, it, that trailer and it looked absolutely terrible. Everyone was underwhelmed by the like graphics and such like that. It came, it went, it died because it, because of like some of the buildup for it. Redfall was also the same way, albeit Redfall is a bad game, but like. 
Redfall, they also put out bad trailers for those, and the game never recovered as well. Maybe you have to learn from the trailer. You have to learn from your mistakes here. It's like they put out three different like trailers for Redfall. No one understood what that game was, and then like also looked bad from a gameplay perspective, and it died because of it. If you remember, like what they called like Reggie Gate when the like this the mm. the like the like the elite that was oh yeah. Uh, yeah. The brute that was put out that looked uh, absolutely horrible in um Halo Infinite. It's like you only get one first impression in life. Wasn't you... his name Craig? Craig, thank you. That's what I was thinking. I was like, <laughs> Craig. I was gonna go through my my names to get to it eventually, <laughs> but I digress. It was Craig Gate. But yeah, it was one of those things to where I'm like, you have to nail a you have to nail these things, and which is why like Forza always does well because you can't show off a bad car game. Like you can't you can't show that off. But like, well, I think bad. the same. You know, lot of saying maybe announcing the fables are on the way. Maybe announcing your perfect darts are on the way was probably a big mistake um, when there was nothing there to show or even knew what the games were going to be about. It would have been nicer for them to hold off until recently saying, look what we've got coming. Here's a snippet of it. So you know? RGT, what would you have done for that showcase then if you don't show anything? You would only had two games. Well, no, the problem is that, I mean, they've, they've, they've had these games announced for years. Why, why announce games that people are going to be speaking about for a long time but know nothing about, haven't seen anything about, that's nicer if you've if you've got at least some development done so that when mm-hmm. you've announced it within two, three months, you can then show footage and then you can dribble it out as you go. So people uh, are then getting more and more into the brand, but announcing it and then nothing. It's not a fan that, of showcases. Yeah, it's it's a tough one. You know, Sony have done the same, Nintendo have done the same. You know, sometimes you've seen they've announced the game, this is coming. You know, you had the things of the the remake of Knights of the Old Republic, you know, and we all know what happened to that. It just disappeared. You know, it's, the, the studio had trouble. That's the issue I sort of find. But you're right, Seb, that that balance of actually getting that PR and getting the hype train so it gradually builds. So people are getting snippets and bits and pieces, and then you get the date of, of announcement of when that game's coming out. It's a very hard thing to do because obviously with games development, you get setbacks on the way. You're going to have issues where you're going to have to like, so you do get that. But I think to announce something that you have nothing for, and it's literally just in an idea stage, sometimes can really come back to haunt you. I think like I think it just depends on where you're at in the like in, in, with public reception. I think Nintendo and PlayStation could get away with just announcing a games in development, as we've seen with like Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. If you look back on the Nintendo showcase from like two or three years ago, mm-hmm. all they said is the new Zelda, the Breath of the Wild remake is in development. Everyone lost their minds. Mm-hmm. And it's because they had the goodwill enough to like goodwill enough that all they needed to do was say, yeah, hey, it's a strong this brand. is now. Yeah, and yeah. it's also they did the same with Metroid and like and also with Pikmin. But to, if we're being honest, but, but mm. like and PlayStation did the same thing with Ghost of Tsushima. It's like they had introduced that game with a big up splash of like gameplay. They had a strong enough brand from PlayStation Studios that they can just show that and yeah. people like lose their minds and they're going like, oh, we got something brand new. Xbox just hasn't built up built up that quite like that notoriety right. with fans yet. And, you know, like it's, it's a tricky balance to play because like, if you don't introduce those things super early, then you, and then when you do a showcase like you did last year, that showcase is dead. And yeah, then, I agree. I agree with you on that. And yeah. the, the problem is because a perfect dark and a fable probably, well, definitely hasn't got that player base and, and audience that you, you, you know, your spider bands, your Zelda's, your Mario's have. Re- releasing or announcing it really early can be damaging because all you mm-hmm. get is a whiff of interest from nostalgia from people that played original games of those and then that's just gone again and then six months later you hear oh yeah they're doing fable aren't they you get a bit more information and then it's gone again so it's hard to keep that it's not a, a stable ip that is gonna people are gonna really want to know about it's it's just something that is just there in the background so i think like you say this showcase would be awesome to see footage from Perfect Dark and Fable, amongst others. Just Links know, three. So we know they go. Links, Links three. three. <laughs> the true king of kings. The trilogy finally complete. 
So <laughs> let me ask a question though. Like, do you think any of the IPs that are currently, I just, I think I just read it off 10 different IPs. Do you think any of those are like enough to move the needle or as far as like, these are IPs that's going to get people ingratiated in and hyped about Xbox. Well, I'm, I'm always, I'm really unsure what the Xbox demographic is now. Um, you've got, you know, you've got your forces um, and, and your, your legacy games, which have come through the systems, you know, since the OG Xbox, are they system sellers now, or are people who play on Xbox as more multiplayer Call of Duty players? Do you know what I mean? I don't know where the demographic is or what the system sellers are. I mean, you could make an amazing Fable game, but are fifty percent of Xbox players going to say, "What the hell's Fable? Never heard of it." Do you know what I mean? Is that I don't quite know where the uh, demographic is or what the system seller they're, is. They're probably in, the 360 brought quite a large transient crowd from the PS2 era in the UK specifically. Definitely, yeah. They were bored of waiting for a new console from PlayStation because that had already been dated as being another year away who jumped on board the 360 train. Mm, mm. Now, you know, I jumped on the 360 train off the back of having an original Xbox, so I was ingratiated to Fable and PGR and the names that mattered to me at the time. Other people that went through original Xbox, Halo, all the good stuff that came with that, the original Forza, and then obviously the 360 got boosted by that sort of transient crowd, but they didn't hang around long. You know, as soon as the PS3 came, they went and collared one of those and started drifting away from the brand, and you kind of felt the momentum being pulled out of Xbox. Now, it happened coincidentally at the same time as the Kinect launch, and so it will always be hard to draw a line and say, the issue was this. Okay, but they... They did water that down. I see a whole new wave of players with Xboxes mm. now, and I think they're more into Sea of Thieves. I actually think they're more into Grounded. I think they're more into sort of a hi-fi rush. I don't think that they're into some of the older franchises. You know, James the Work Experience Boy here at the show, he has been trying to get into Gears. He thinks it looks cool from a box art point of view. He's played a little bit of the first one. Is interested to see where it goes. Check on him in the gaming room. What are you playing? Sea of Thieves. Off to find another Megalodon. Okay. Well, and also, enough. I think uh, I think you think of how many people that you know who have bought a Series X or Series S. How many men, how many of them have bought them because Perfect Dark and Fable are being remade? None. 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 Absolutely none. It's, Do you know it, what I mean? That's, I don't know where that demographic is. And I think George is right. I think the 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 people who are playing the Xbox now are on the games on Games Pass. They're playing. Sea of Thieves, Call of Duties, they're playing those games on there. So I don't know, although for me, personally, Fable and Perfect Dark is very exciting. But I'm I mean, probably a very small minority of people who want to buy an Xbox. Or the thing is, Xbox. we talk of dead franchises. If Indiana Jones isn't enough to get someone hyped up, how the hell is Joanna Dark a dead N64 oh, game? That? That was a kind of a loose sequel to Goldeneye and then was a 360 launch title that was beyond... It was beyond rubbish. Mm. It's not. It's it. Listen, and that's why I brought up the whole question is because, like, I think this showcase could be a ten out of ten and still be one of those things to where, like, even if these games like hit their expected dates, I don't think they're system selling games. I don't think they're working on IPs that people care about in twenty twenty three. And I think that's one of the big problems that mm. that Xbox has and yeah, concerned themselves with. I think. I think, you know, the best thing, I think part of the reason why you buy Activ Activision Blizzard is because, like, you know that that is a proven commodity that yeah. works. And and also, you know, the Call of Duty ain't, ain't missing until, like, a decade from now. But that, mm -hmm. albeit that said, it's like, I think when you look at the slew of portfolio of games and their, their studios, I think, of course, you're working on these because you're, again, trying to build on the nostalgia trend that Nintendo is so richly capitalized on. But like, I do think there are like, there's going to be some questions coming out of this. Is like, what IPs can we work on next mm, that are definitely. going to move the needle? And I think that's where like, I think a lot of these games that are going to come out are games that were put in development like three years ago and such like that. We're going to see these games come out, and then all of them, not all necessarily all of them, but most of them are going to pivot towards new IPs going forward. And I think. Mm you know like hi-fi rush with um tangle game works new ip i think that's where the direction is going in i think right now like phil spencer is trying to see what hits and see what kind of like 
kind of test out which IPs are still relevant and then get really good data to back up his points of like, hey, we need to go in new directions. And I, th- I think this is the, the testing phase for, for Xbox. Well, I think also, if done right, with I know I keep going back to Fave and Perfect Dark, I think you show footage of Forza in there. Forza's been through the life cycle of the Xbox. They've all been brilliant games. They're fantastic. The Horizon spin-offs are superb. You'll always have that audience there. There'll be plenty of people excited about Forza. With these, like I say, with Fave and Perfect Dark, if done right, you've got the nostalgia people, the people who played originals, they're going to be excited about them games. And if you make them really good, if you make these eight, nine, even 10 out of 10 games, you might introduce a new audience to them. And like you say, going mm-hmm. forward, then start a new series of these games. Make them these big IPs, start making these games again, and then you could drag this new audience into them. Add something, add something that will bring the, the new gamers into it. You know, Fable, add a really nice, you know, multiplayer side to it. I don't yeah. think you'd do that. Like I think I don't you think already... they would, but I think I no. think that would that would attract which the majority of their audience is. You know, whereas I think in a showcase, they showed a Forza gameplay. A lot of people are gonna be going, Oh wow, I can't wait for this game. They show Fable gameplay, like I say, probably fifty percent of the audience is gonna be going, What's Fable? I don't don't interest me. You know what I mean? But if you can make it so you can drag them them gamers in, you could have a good IP proxy going forward where you could then start making sequels to it. I think um you I think you bring in excellent points. I think you you I think you isolate the audience and also for like those old heads that remembered when they were trying to take Fable as a multiplayer like that mm. was uh, that was what Fable Four was essentially you know mm. like they brought it into the multiplayer space. I think you'll marginalize a lot of those the, that audience and kind of like also it shows that you haven't learned from the past and that because that multiplayer Fable is what killed it like that's mm. what killed the franchise there. So I don't think that's the IP you take to a multiplayer space. Plus, the part of the mm. reasons why they're doing a lot of these games is because they already have a slew of multiplayer games. Like, they already have the Groundeds of the World. They already have the Sea of Thieves. Like, what they're what, why you buy these studios and why you have them making these type of games is because you're focusing on a single-player initiative. And that's why the Perfect Darks, that's why the Fables... No, that's true. Yeah, no, yeah. no you're right. That's there. why yeah, Hellblade definitely. and such like that. Like, you... like a, no, for everything you say about xbox like xbox's um like multiplayer catalog is extensively deep and no, that's also true. that's yeah. one thing they do need is single player they need some big single player games yeah you are right with that definitely. that's the focus and yeah. that's where you go with everything yeah. versus like because i'm like you this is why a lot of people did not like the place you showcase is because six of those games were games as a service multiplayer games mm. that and that if I showed you trailers without without having any indication of like, hey, this is a, this is a trailer for this multiplayer. This is a trailer for this one, this one. And I took all the names out of those. I bet you can name three of those. Mm. And also like it, also like it's a really hard Xbox is being smart about this. X, Xbox knows like multiplayer games are hard to develop. And also, like, it's hard to break into a market where Fortnite, Apex, and all these other markets are absolutely easy, y'all. Eating every game's lunch that comes out. That's why games as a service games are dying upon release right now. Mm. Yeah. So and you have to go with a single player initiative and you, yeah, you have definitely. to try your known IPs first and then go mm. to the new IPs afterwards. No, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so, George, I, we've been talking about this quite a bit. Like, do you expect the Xbox showcase to be a 10 out of 10 showcase? I think I'd like it to be, mm-hmm. but I actually think huh, this is this is them now. This is the green flag for them to have a ten. <laughs> but I actually think it's going to end up being a little bit seven, seven or eight ish, which I think would be heralded as success, especially versus mm-hmm. people's opinion of the latest PlayStation showcase. It was a bit hit or miss for some people. I think if Xbox can just learn a little bit from that, re-edit the video, tweak a few different bits. The good thing about going second is that you mm. can you can add content, you can take away content, you can take an opinion on how that was received, or what if we doubled down on this game and showed a little bit more of that. I mean, you know, there's also the element of maybe overthinking it a bit too much and then sculpting your whole interaction about as a reaction to something else is content instead of just concentrating on your own but i think there are lessons to be learned i think there's there's some good yardage here to be gained 
um, by Xbox if they play it right. Um, I think that some nice gameplay walkthroughs, I think will do them a world of good, especially from some of the newer IPs that they're working on. Uh, and maybe some of these older franchises as well, just to help people sort of experience or understand where these sort of changes, if there are any, or nuances to the gameplay and or maybe how they're honouring the old systems and legacy titles to bring them into the modern generation and then showcase how they can sort of swing off of their sort of USPs. You know, Fable, for instance, it's about having an open world. It's about watching the world evolve in front of you. At least this was the original idea. The original idea came off the back of the original Xbox having a hard drive. Therefore, all of a sudden, you could make worlds that were sculpable and changeable that flowed with you through the game. Obviously, when that got to 360, it it went to a whole other level of what they could do with it. Now, after that, Fable 3 and then the Kinect tie-in things, the mud hole got stomped a bit dry. If they could come at it now, utilizing some of those original ideas that Peter Molyneux had that never actually made it to paper, I actually think there's somewhere that that could be good. But that doesn't show itself in the way they've shown it to this point with like a flashy CGI trailer. I think the best way to show Fable, the humor within the universe and everything like that is to focus in and give us gameplay. Ten minutes, five minutes, just a little window into Mm. what they've been up to. Mm. You mentioned the initiative earlier. Meant to make people in the industry bob themselves. It recruited so many people and we've heard all sorts of different things. There's been creative differences there and they might not actually have anything solid because one guy's idea of how it was going to be was different to the teams and and that resulted in a little bit of a a mess of said unannounced title so you know i think if they came out of it with a seven or eight i think they would consider it a job well done if it was any more than that i think they consider it obviously you can't you know much higher than that and you're almost into perfection territory and i think there'll be a lot of back slapping going on um xbox towers and i think quite rightly so Uh, perfect dark needs to have a good showing i think we need to see some more details of forza and where they're taking that i mean this is a simulation version not a right of forza horizon so it it really needs to sing to the you know when we saw gran turismo as an example they were talking about track temperature making a difference where the rain settled on the course you know how all that worked back towards you as a player and what that would feel like as it translated in game there was difference in height of the tracks so the varying different densities of air affected how the car performed you don't really feel them as a casual but i think if you're a, an experienced simulator racing gamer then these aficionado, sort of aficionado basically aficionado exactly these sort of things sing to you and i think would you know to leverage on those and then maybe you got to sell the benefits. Talk about how they're incorporating similar things or something others haven't even thought of and they're moving the genre forward. I think that's good. Obviously, Forza originally had the decal system, which meant people could create all sorts of things. And that's gone across as almost like a, a legacy feature in all Forzas going forward. So maybe focus on that and how things can be different and, and, and more stuff they can do, be it layers, templates, whatever. I don't really know or care at this point. But what I would ultimately say is, They've got so much potential. And I think that's always been the sort of the weird thing about Xbox is when they realize their potential, they are unstoppable. When they don't quite have one forward directive goal to push towards, I feel like things don't go great. It's a great place to play multi-plats. It's a great place to experience some of the online team-based games that we've talked about earlier. Ground they feel like DC, Earthies. you know, DC compared to MCU, you know, like the where where DC doesn't have a direction a lot of the times. Yeah, and I, I don't think that's wrong. I think Xbox are a bit harsh on themselves, you know, to take what's probably got the most column inches for them. It wasn't Redfall. It was actually a Hi-Fi Rush. And then mm-hmm. to sort of publicly stomp on that game when it should have been Let's face it, they should have been boxing up Xboxes with that. They should have just lent into the brand. You know, why not release an Xbox Series X with a cardboard slip on it with Hi-Fi Rush on the front? It's snappy, it's cool, it makes really good trailers on the internet, uh, and it's interesting and new. 
you know, an Xbox Series S Hi-Fi Rush Edition. You know, what hurt would that be? I, I think they're. I think they're going to do that for the second game. I don't think they expected the first game to be as big as what it yeah, was. Yeah, but Seb at retail shipping a flat piece of cardboard slip that the retailer then just flops out of a bag of hundred of them and slides over the case and puts on the shelf. I'm not asking for a lot here. No, for sure not. For and sure not. In conjunction with the stealth drop, you know, no one was expecting that much of that game. But you know what? It absolutely delivered. They allowed a team to go off script, do something completely different, either as a palate cleanser, as a direction change for the whole studio, and it should be rewarded. PlayStation are in danger, in my opinion, of realizing that they've they've almost banked all in on their franchises. We know we'll get another God of War. We know we're going to get another Last of Us. They'll be stupid not to because of the hype of the TV show. But does that mean Naughty Dog becomes the Last of Us studio now, a bit like the Gears of War studio and a bit like the Halo studio? I'm, They're working I'm on a new IP. Yeah, well, I believe it when I see it. And if it comes <laughs> out if it comes out this era, I'm excited. But, you know, you, you see my point here. They have always been well known for dropping a franchise after three games and moving on to something new. We need to see that again. You know, is Insomniac basically Spider-Man studio now? Obviously, we've got no. Wolverine. No, but... you also have um, Ratchet, Ratchet and Clank. Clank. Yeah. You also, yeah, I, I do think... Yeah, yeah is, that them, is, that making those, is that them making those three games now for the rest of forever, or are they ever allowed to make anything new? We've got Wolverine, I suppose, but that's probably about... Yeah, I know what you mean. You're, you're getting bottlenecked into being a developer of a game rather than a developer that makes games. Yeah, I mean, and, but, and that to can... me is a mistake. Yes. I, can we be honest here, though? Like, okay, so I, I want to focus um, on some news that came in a second ago. Like, Starfield is not going to be at this direct, by the way. I want to focus, like, I wanted to bring that up. Um, yeah, Starfield is having its own specialized direct. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, so it, so Starfield's not going to be Fair here. Play. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. I was worried. So, I, thought, I thought it wasn't going to be nothing at all then, but when you said it's got its own direct, then yeah, this. It's got its own direct. It'll have yeah, its own it spotlight. I think that's the right move for it. I, yeah, you definitely. Know, it's a big gameplay. You know, I wanted to bring that up before story. like somebody hit us up in the corrections, by the way. But um and then um Stalker 2 is a game I forgot to mention. Like that was a game that was shown in the last showcase. Um the studio, like it was rumored to be coming out last year. <laughs> Unfortunately, that studio was like one of the studios that had to evacuate the whole process due to the war in the Ukraine. Like they mm, were oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like Russia legitimately knocked on their door and they they basically had to take up arms and kind of like you know, defend their home. And I, I completely respect to the respect to that team. Hats off to them. Hope everything's going well with that game. I, I expect to see, I expect we'll hear more about that during the showcase, at least like a check in on like, Hey, how are y'all guys doing? Kind of like a feel good story there. But like, mm. I digress Um, on the PlayStation side of things, George, it's like, did y'all hear the news about like PlayStation is shifting 60% of like the upcoming budget for this to the games as a service games? I did. And what makes me more nervous about that is games as a service, but they still wanted to charge 70 bucks for the game on the way in. That's certainly the... The Legend of Zelda Tears of the King ripoff model. Yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah, so they're going to bring out games as a service, which you're going to be tied into a game's, you know, um, what's it called? Um, A battle pass type scenario. But Mm -hmm. he paid 70 bucks to get in. So, okay, you'll probably get an exclusive hat for your character. Like, whoopsie doos. It's like, I'm about as interested in that as I am in contracting AIDS. uh, So, which one would you rather have them do? Would you rather them do that or work on studios that they or work on games that the studios know how to make? Because I think you're, you're picking like between the two different philosophies here. Which one, which one of the evils would you prefer to have? That's why I brought up this question. That's the rock in a hard place. I'd prefer like these studios to be making games I already know are going to be bangers. I don't, and, you know, like uh, until these games start becoming stagnant, I don't care that you're making the same games over and over again. You know, I don't care if you're making the same games. Fair enough, but uh, once the games become stagnant, the well at that point is dead. I always like to leave people wanting more rather mm. than wanting have had enough. I'd rather someone left the table hungry so then when they sat back down again, they were starving than f- gorging people out on an all-you-can-eat buffet that's had about as much interest and care dedicated to it as, uh, I don't know, someone fresh out of one day a college of cooking course turns up to cook you a gourmet meal. We all can imagine how that would go. 
Can I counter that? I think PlayStation has been doing that though. Like if you look at like Guerrilla Games, they were doing they were beating the dead horse within like with um um what was it um Infamous Killzone. 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 Yeah. Yeah, and then they switched to Horizon and such like that. Then like um you we had Uncharted Games Lord, then now they're switching they switch emphasis from that. We had you know, God of War, sure, we had a lot of God of War previously, but, like, they also switched what God of War meant, and it felt like a very much a new franchise from there. Well, Even you have said, like... They- well, that's where they need to go with that now. They don't... They, and making these sort of games-as-a-service idea, and then... I don't mind a game-as-a-service if it's free. I, mm, mm. Then I, I can you dip know, in or dip out and make my own opinion. If my opinion has to be formed after exchanging £70 for something... I'm not going to be so happy. Yeah, I and uh, like you look at the days gone, people. They're working on a new IP. You, I, what I'm saying is, it's like I we haven't really seen a stagnation from Sony yet, and I think because like by the time they reach that point, it seems like they're always mixing things up. Yeah, well, I hope that we're on that we're not on the edge of that for them. In a way, I do because you know there's no better animal than two, three businesses feeling like they've got to prove themselves. That's when they dig deep and give us something special, in my humble opinion. That's when Mm, we saw Sony give us our best. Uh, And it might be when we see Xbox deliver its best. Let's surmise here, if we may, because this has been an interesting and, and, and very topical conversation, so I hope everyone's enjoyed it. Let's just boil it down into its most simple its parts. RGT, in your opinion... Will this Xbox showcase deliver yes or no? Yes. Bobby, in your opinion, will this Xbox showcase deliver yes or no? No. Okay, right. Triple S. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this dude. Will this showcase we deliver need to upload some pictures of him like this. Yes or no? I'm going to say yes. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to say say yes. On the law of averages, this has to. So I'm saying yes. So we'll find out if our prediction was correct next week. Um, I think. Can I can I ask you one question about this? Can, uh, like George, what is one game that they could show at this Xbox showcase that would get you hyped? Indiana Jones gameplay. RGT. What about you? Um, I I'm split between. I'd love to see. You know, everyone knows this world a massive Uncharted fan. If they could make their version of Uncharted with Indiana Jones, I'm all over that. Um, and also a really nice modern, good looking fable. I'd be all over that. That they, them two would be brilliant for me. We already we already know what Forza's about, and I love Forza. Um, yeah, but those two, that's what would yeah sell it to me. Bobby is what? What's the system seller for you? Um, avow, avow. I think I'm right there with you. Yeah, yeah. That and I was so curious because I, I think. What about like, Blinks Three? Blinks and you miss it. Put Blinks? that in your fantasy draft, and and I'll... <laughs> that that's what you do. Put that in your fantasy draft. Well, that's a safe zero points because we'll never see that. With all that said and done, all the Xbox noise out the way. Let's focus in on the reason why people actually bother to listen to this show week in, week out. It's the immortal Stingray. Now, gentlemen, he showed himself to us in a variety of different ways recently, uh, and mm. some have been on the edge of acceptable, if I'm honest. Uh, it's time for a peek in what we affectionately call Stingray's boot wall Nestle between some counterfeit nappies and a dodgy copy of Battlefriendle this week. These are the new release highlights for the week June 5th to June 11th. First of these are out on digital or physical or will be by the time this podcast is in your feed, but could be. Oh, ho, oh, oh. They could be region dependent. Spring stop. Wow, wow, wow. Bobby. To me, it's looking fiery, but I'm interested. How are you seeing the Ray this week? He has on black, tight latex speedos, and he Love is putting it. on Jergens cherry blossom lotion, <laughs> and his hair is slicked back in one of the tightest ponytails <laughs> I have ever seen in my life. So tight and that his he's hair, put his face in permanent surprise. And his hair is so long today in the ponytail that he actually tucked it into the back of the speedo. And I some of the it. hair is coming out from the bottom. 
kind of odd, but you know, that's my. Is your right version there. of Ray brought Wayne or not, or is Wayne in the Budgie Smugglers? No, Wayne is over there, but again, he's a little bit too far. I mean, he looks like he has like he looks like little Mario before he had the mushroom. <laughs> that's what it looks like. Over there. <laughs> It's a little odd, but you know, I mean, <laughs> we had the that's oh that's my. what they look like over here. Uh, Triple S, <laughs> pray tell, how are you seeing the Ray this week? I'm seeing his cousin Country Ray and Country Question. Ray. When you did the UCP American Takeover, and I think you know, I don't want to hype something that might not become a thing, but we're thinking of doing a, a midweek American show every week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've signed you up to that. Third case said yes. Okay. Uh, you need you need American Ray on there. Going forward, <laughs> this Billy Bob Country Ray. I yeah, think Billy we... Bob Country Ray. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Bob. That's how you're seeing him, is it? What's he wearing today? Billy Bob Country Ray is joined by his cousin Willis, and and both of them built like an upside down bowling pin. You know, heavy on the top, small on the bottom. Wearing some some real good spurs and some boots. Um, Willis is up there in New York. He's a little more cityfied, so he's got um. Got on a little bit of some chucks. He got on some some jeans that kind of look <laughs> kind of look a little tight around the mid waist and such like that. And then can he uh, have one of those little leather ties with a steer uh, sort of pin? For yeah, that's it. country way. Willis over there in New York is a little more cityfied. He looks like a little wall. Uh, just got off his shift at Wall Street and such like that. Country way though, country way. Boys, that right down in the mud in Mississippi right now. Um, got on some. Got on his um spurs. Got on his um backless chaps he's got on his um stone cold steve austin like vest and such like that where he's showing oh. showing the guns and such i like it got on his wow. 10 gallon hat oh. and then in his jaw he's got a big <laughs> hunk of dip <coughs> big hunk of dip <coughs> apple cinnamon flavor baby <laughs> oh yeah boy a big That's hunk a of dip. spot right there wow wow RGT. I don't know how we could follow that. Uh, wow. Well, technically, you've got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Law of averages and all that. Um, yeah, to, as always, he's on topic. So I think Stingray is prepared for a 10 out of 10 Xbox showcase because he is dressed like an early 2000s Phil Spencer, who's been slightly ill. No, he's, why isn't he dressed as Peter Moore? No, he's he's gone for like if Phil Spencer had been there from the day one. Wow. So he's yeah he's 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 got that Xbox T-shirt on like Phil Spencer has just to let people know he is a gamer. He's got that sort of part track suit, part cardigan top on, open fashionably, so you can see the Xbox symbol. He's in slightly tight jeans, pair of trainers. But I think Wayne's got the wrong memo again because he's covered in all Connect gear. He's got a Connect T-shirt, Connect. <laughs> he's, he's, he's got the, yeah he's got the wrong wrong era again. He looks a bit ridiculous, actually, because, yeah, I don't know where he found all these promotional Connect stuff, but it's gone now, Wayne, mate. It's gone. Let it go. What well, What is he wearing on the shirt? Because Phil Spencer always teases what's coming next for the, the brand by dropping it on his shirt or in the background. What, oh, what's on what, What's on his shirt? Well, that looks like, just when he moves his, his jacket top to one side, I think it says Fable, I think, on there. So, yeah, I think it oh. might be... I thought it might be Blinks 3. Blinks in your no, Oh, man. No, I mean, Wayne's still standing there trying to play some roller coaster game on the Connect at the minute and doing funny shapes in front of Wayne's, or in front of Ray's. I can't quite see what is on there, but I'm sure it says Fable. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, over to you, George. The thing is, I just looked in your version of Wayne's eye, uh, Ray's eyes, and it just said Connect sensor not connected. <laughs> Adjust the lighting in your room. Yeah. <laughs> and Wayne's still standing there waving around trying to control her. <laughs> like he's doing aerobics. Then he just glitched on top of Sting's head and then he just glitched back in town in front of him. Okay, how am I seeing Ray? I am seeing Ray as Peter Moore of Xbox 360 fame. So he's got like you know, he's got a receding hairline and he's rocking a goatee. He looks a little bit dangerous. And if you remember back from the reveals back in the day, <laughs> he would roll up the sleeve of his jacket and reveal the next game as a tattoo, like he did with Grand Theft Auto 4. So I'm peering at Sting right now. 
and he's put his gun out and he's winked at me and he's rolled up his sleeve. But unfortunately, his tattoo was Wayne, but the ink was still wet on his temporary tattoo. So he stretched Wayne all across his bicep. Uh, One wonders whether he's going to be taller next week or no. Uh, But either which way, he's a smeared graphical art on his father's arm. Uh, I don't even know what I'm looking at anymore. Just a <laughs> massive, just a massive disappointment. Uh, sit down, Ray. You're all good. Uh, either which way, let's have a look in your boot. Here we go. It's Tiny Thor on the PC, June 5th. This actually looks pretty cool if you like your 16-bit style platformers. It's got a little bit of an altered beast look to it, which the name Tiny Thor doesn't exactly present to you. Mm. Uh, and it's definitely viewed in some of the color palette that you would see on a SNES game. So it's almost like the angsty Mega Drive type style, but with the SNES color palette. So unleash the bouncy power of Molyneux in this retro platformer. Use the mighty hammer and many other power ups to travel the realms of Asgard. But watch out. Some mythical creatures do everything to stop Thor from growing up. June 5th on PC. Ooh. Amnesia the Bunker. PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, and Xbox One. June 6th. Amnesia the Bunker is a first-person horror game set in a desolate World War I bunker. Face the oppressing terrors stalking the dark corridors. Search for and use the tools and weapons at your disposal while keeping the lights on at all costs. Overcome fear, persevere, and make your way out alive. That sounds terrifying. That sounds absolutely terrifying. That game. That's, got a, that's got a mummy mummy. That. That's got Triple a mummy mummy for a hair stroke. That's the only mummy mummy that's in that. <laughs> yeah. Who's next? Um, <laughs> Go on, Bobby. Summer of Gods. PC, PS4. Xbox One and Switch, June 6th. Uh, your choices shape the world in this coming-of-age RPG. Expect some fizzies. Um, <laughs> as a new arrival in 1980s rural Japanese town, Japanese town, Japanese with a town. mysterious ability to loop time, your every decision and relationship will affect the outcome of battles against the invading Kinjai. Yeah. That sounds uh, sounds interesting. That uh, what are you going to take out the uh, boot next, Seb? I am going to take out two D and Top D for PS Five, Xbox Series X, and well X, PS Four, and X Bone coming at you June seventh. A cosmic turbulence caused by the, caused the two D platformer and the top down puzzler dimensions to merge. Switch between 2D and top D and their unique perspectives to overcome hard as nails challenges, solve mind melting puzzles, and defeat huge bosses. Ooh, that sounds good. Okay. Oh. That means I get Harmony, the Fall of Reverie, PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, and Switch June 8th. The fate of humanity is at stake. Use your gift of clairvoyance to see into the future and stock up an apocalypse that threatens the balance between your world and the deities. I like your VR. I like your VO voice there. Yeah. It was really good. Get me get me a gig in it. See if the Fur K Corporation. I will quite happily exit UCP universe completely. Uh, Write me out the law, edit me out all the episodes. If I can be a voice over artist, I'm I'm done. I'm happy. We can make that happen. I'll take 10% as your agent and we'll make it happen. Let me give you 50. 50? Oh, man. That can buy me count- cartons of milk? What? Oh, well, just me and you, Bobby. <laughs> uh, next up, Speed Crew Switch June 8th. A hilarious party game that focuses on chaotic cooperation between players. The task of the pit crew is to inspect arriving cars and perform quick repair services while navigating intricate levels. To succeed and beat their bit arrival, players must help each other and build tactics for each race. That's my mummy mummy. That's, That's my really mummy fun. mummy going out on the limb. Mine was harmony. I mean, mine was harmony. Okay. No, mine was amnesia. Sorry. Okay. Oh. Up next. Uh, hang on. 
I just need to hype up Speed Crew a bit more. If you've got a Switch, you want a little game on the go, you want Bomber Crew, but for the Switch without bombers in it and cars, this is close to what you might want. This could be a nice little pickup to break up your Tears of the Kingdom playthroughs. Mm. And you've just got a party game as well. That sounds good fun. If you, yeah, I if think you're you know, playing acts together, that's it's, good fun. It's got an overcooked vibe to it. I think you'll mm, like this. Definitely, definitely. Good fun. I like Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. True story. Well, next. We got Mask of Rose, PC and Switch, June 8. A marvelous romance with a hint of murder. Lose your heart in a stolen city in this game. Uh, of amorous intrigue. Seek love for yourself or for your friends. Help a murdered man find justice and find out for the bats. George, I think he's trying to take your, your gig here. Yeah, just RGT left just as he wanted, head of the UCP. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Mask of the Rose, I actually saw at WASD live and I actually thought of all the stands that were there, RGT, you were a hold, you were my carer for the day, making sure mm-hmm. I didn't bite Shuya Yoshida, although you didn't act quick enough. Um, this was no. the, This was that wonderful game with the best set dressing in town. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it did look very interesting, that game. Mm, very so interesting. We'll see what comes of that. Who's mm. next? We've got one more. We got one more. Is that Galactic Hill Incident? Or Grey Hill Incident? Yeah. Yeah. I think I prefer Grey. Galactic Hill, to be honest. Yeah, I, th- I was about to say, that sounds dope. <laughs> Grey. <laughs> that sounds dope. It sounds dope, but you made the name up. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at that. I was just like, man, I wish that was said Galactic. But, oh, Grey Hill Incident. Okay, so we got Grey Hill Incident for PC, PS4, PS4. Four and PS5. That's coming at us June 9th. This story-driven survival horror game is a classic alien alien invasion which takes place during the early 90s. You play as Ryan <laughs> Baker, equipped with a baseball bat and a few bullets in his revolver. This story takes place, it takes you across the atmospheric neighborhood of Grey Hill, which is evolved by invaded by um, UFC. <laughs> invaded! UFC, invaded by <laughs> UFOs and great and great aliens. Until you what this game? I have never heard of it before now, but <laughs> and, it looks, that's, it that's Sim speaking there, not Triple S. I yeah. only yeah, heard that's the real game. the artist. That's a real the real only yeah, I don't know. Heard of. The did artist I, formerly known as Seb. Did I create <laughs> Seb? Because back in the day, I used to do readouts like that, and I just wondered now if he's a figment of mine. That's the star of Driven Survival Horror Game. <laughs> Cowpole. S- scary. That is it's a cowpoke. <laughs> cowpoke. It's a cowpoke. <laughs> so yeah, we cowpoke um, means something completely different in the UK. I don't know what it means over there, but let's cowpoke. Yeah, cowpoke. Yeah. Cow a cowpoke. Yeah, mm-hmm. we don't use that over here. Oh yeah. No. What really. about what about in Texas? Yeah, we we know about cowpokes in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> we know about cowpokes in Texas. That's how you get them to mose alone around the pasture, man. <laughs> yeah, as you go as you go south in America, it's very weird. Uh, you you uh, cowpoke is what you get them on to mosey down from one pasture to another. You corral them sun guns up. <laughs> you cowpoke them from corral cow to corral. Them. From corral to corral. When you tell them, when you, it's time to Betsy for Betsy to come in before she get taken away by NATO. You pack cowpoke them in. <laughs> What? Oh, Poco Man. <laughs> Got a mill. Come on. Whoa. Do they not have this on Farm Simulator? It's not in as There's much detail. Is that any cows as... or anything? There are cows, but it's no way near in as much detail as you want. You don't have to do really that much husbandry. You just make sure the food levels are right. You do the food mixing. You have to harvest. We're way off track here. Ray <laughs> is looking at me furiously. Uh, not only because his reveal of his son on his arm ended up in a smeared mess um, but also because he's got other contacts to meet uh, and he wants to get around them so I'm going to reach in quickly and pull out my retro VHS and I'll tell you what it's going to be it's going to be copy of Bumblebee I might be controversial and say possibly the best Transformers movie and that's all I'm going to say. What have you guys? Really got? controversial. Is it not? No, the bar ain't that high. Listen, I'm personal friends with Shauna Booth, so me saying that is controversial. 
you? How do you say his name? LaBeouf? Shy, yeah, shy of birth. Oh, shy LaBeouf? No, La not, Buff? no, not LaBeouf? the guy out of Transformers. No, the guy you a bit nervous about getting a woman pregnant. Shy of birth here in the village. He's a bit of a strange character. <laughs> oh, I think he's, yeah, he's Celtic. Yeah, shy mm. of birth. I thought it was Shy LaBeouf. No, I don't know him. No, he's a celebrity. No, I won't know anything about him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's in your boot, RGT? Um, I am going for. I, always, I don't know how to correct my pronounce this, but it's a film I love and I want to watch again. It is. I think it's either X Machina or X Machina. It's um, Machina, man. Yes, Machina. let's go. The movie's amazing. It's a fantastic mm-hmm. film. That is love so, it. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, cuddle up with Mrs. RGT. Get some popcorn out. Slap it in the VHS. I like it. What's Mrs. <laughs> steady, steady PG, George PG. Bobby, I meant, what's I meant, meant the no cassette in the video. No fizz is happening in that, well, that happens. That film is being watched. Um, <laughs> I'm pulling out the uh, In Search of Darkness, oh. which is a 80s <laughs> look back on all uh, of horror movies. Parts one, two, and three. Okay, okay. I like that. I like that. That sounds awesome. George, what's in it's the book good. for you this time? Bumblebee. Oh yeah, Bumblebee. I forgot. You know the whole shot of <laughs> thing. Thank you. My bad. My bad. In the book for me, I'm going Spider Man into the Spider Verse. Actually, uh, I got confused. It's not. It wasn't Shia Birth. It was Shia Beef, the vegan warrior from the village. He's made a little yurt on the on the, uh, <laughs> the village <laughs> square. Is he fighting with vegan soy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have that spot on the corner. Baggage. It's, it's totally been writing scripts for you. It's difficult because in New York City, a, a corner spot to sell your product is outrageously expensive. Yeah, a little bit. Are they shy of beef? No, no but they're but, full of hoes. You know, they have a lot of them. They got and sometimes <laughs> they got beef just in a plastic bag. It's not even clean. It's just disgusting. You know, people eat it outside the street. Good luck. I don't know why they do it. That means you're shy of beef. Place, I'm definitely shy of that beef. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not going nowhere near a truck. Why have they got it in a bag? What are they going to do? Take it home I'll, and make beef curds? Listen, I'm, 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 I'm going to describe something for you right now, okay? Here's what happens. Okay. I get to work at 7 a.m. So I get to work at 6.30 a.m. That's the kind of guy I am. Okay. And as I get off the train, I get up on 49th Street, and I'm walking towards 8th Avenue. Anybody who knows this, this, this street, this is a very strange and odd neighborhood. Because you got bums that are like career bums, and then you have <laughs> re- very, very rich people, like millionaires, on the same block going to work or not going to work. Okay. <laughs> As you walk down and you cross the street, there's a corner right on 48th and uh, 49th and Broadway, and there's this man, and he sells kebabs and beef, you know, meals on a truck. Now the truck is always there because. I've been to work at two in the morning for certain projects we had to do. And the truck is always there. And the hot dogs and the kebabs are still there. So that means these meats have been left out for days. Okay. Then I saw him pull up in a truck and he pulled out a regular plastic bag with chopped meat. And I asked him, I said, that's disgusting. And he told me to go, you know, polite words away. And I said, that's disgusting. And then on the way home from work, I saw a little kid. He wanted a kebab. And I told his mom, stay away from this man and his kebabs and just go right next door to the burger spot. Do yourself a favor. Ooh, Don't eat street dodgy. meat in New York City. Especially some hot dogs, bro. <laughs> Don't eat street They're sitting meat. in that hot dog beef water. Days. Disgusting. <laughs> That's how you build New York toughness, man. <laughs> no, nah, bro. That's how you build up. <laughs> Building yeah. tough is going to come out when you go to the bathroom and then coming out all the way. Mm-hmm. Don't do it to yourself, please. Stay away. <sighs> okay. I, I don't know anymore, but I think we've all had a VHS. The smoke <laughs> has settled and the dust has cleared and looking down on the floor, I see nothing. Except for water, a water, <laughs> water puddle and a hot dog. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I see a I see a bluebird firing off down the drive and peeking out, rays peeking out between some beef curtains he's got from New York in the back window. Uh, 
I don't think there's new lighter nice. t-shirts. <laughs> on, don't eat street meat. <laughs> don't eat it, man. Oh, shy of fur, shy of beef, and shy of fur. <laughs> I think they're brothers. Uh, anyway. Anyone that paid any attention to the show at any point in time in the 170 episodes that we've done, whether you, and let me say, the places that we listen to around the world, the UK, the USA, we listen to in Russia. I don't know what, I've said this the other couple of weeks ago, I don't know what's happening there, but we are, we're fast becoming the most biggest video game show in Russia. And that's terrifying to me. I don't know what I'm doing wow. to appeal to that demographic, but it's happening anyway. The Netherlands, the aforementioned Germany. The only place we seem to be slipping back a little bit, I must say, is the original home of the UCP, the UK. So Ooh. it's time for the UK listeners to do the right thing. Step up and spread the word. Because if you're bigger in Russia and Germany than you are in the USA and the UK, something went wrong, didn't it, Here, Something went wrong. <laughs> Maybe I'll so stop juice. drinking Maybe I'll just stop drinking the tea. It's probably the tea. Mm. The tea. The tea is not a tea is not a real drink. Oof. Fizzy pop and a fizzy pop. RGT, what are you open to play? <laughs> I can't <laughs> listen to this heresy. <laughs> tea is just not a real drink. Well, what, what I'm hoping to play while I'm drinking my PG tips, I'll have you very much. I will be playing Tears of the Kingdom. That's why you're playing that game. You're on that tea. Yeah, you're high on tea. Yeah, uh, no, I'll be playing more Tears of the Kingdom. Um, probably a bit more retro stuff this week. I've been looking at me OG Xbox, thinking, right, oh, what I've had another since I've you know since I was played um, the Halos on there. I want to get back into something on on the original Xbox. So I'm going to be going through the collection to see what I can. Why don't you get um, original Xbox had a version of Indiana Jones on it that was also on PS2, but the original Xbox version was actually good. The PS2 one is a, is a janky mess. The extra mm. horsepower on the Xbox helps it massively. Mm, I don't think uh, I've got that. Yeah, I'll look into getting that. I, I yeah, I can't something. remember what it's called now. Staff or something or other, I think it is. Yeah, because um, yeah, they, they had that on the Wii as well, I think, didn't they? No, it's a different I imagine one. It, it I imagine was... it runs terrible on Wii. Yeah, I <laughs> You're waving your, your Wii motorbike trying to climb a rock. I don't even want to. Yeah, maybe they did actually bring out with waggle controls for the Wii, but like yeah. three, four years later. Um, but yeah, the original Xbox one was actually quite playable. Right, so I'll look if, into that. That's my homework this week. So yeah, excellent. I'll look, to, look to getting that and yeah, more put, put some more hours into them. Uh, Bobby, what are you open to play? Uh, more Jedi Survivor. And then uh, Diablo 4 for my stepdad. Hmm. Mm, okay, and you said what are you hoping to get uh, tucked into? I will not be playing more Tears of the Kingdom because this game is as stale as three days old bread and evidently boiled hot water in New York. So I will not be playing more Tears of the Kingdom. I will instead be playing Diablo 4 and probably diving into some of these indie red- red- like redacted games that I've um, got review codes for. So I'll be diving into that and then, you know, Maybe I've been invited to a Street Fighter tournament, so you could see me get molly whopped on that <laughs> pretty soon <laughs> as well. How, uh, what are the details for that in case you want to tune in? Is that something we want uh, to tune in for? Yeah, yeah. Um, it is coming up, um, coming up on a, I'll have the links and stuff like that sent to George, but it's coming up on the, um, end of the month. It is a for a charity for, um, I can't remember the charity now. I'm very bad about like taking these details, but I've never played. I've only played Street Fighter like three or four times, but you know, I'm looking forward to getting absolute creamed in this game because I am not a fighting game kind of person, but you know, it's on the Discord. Discord Yeah, I will. I will pop it up on the Discord there and and such like that. Even if you're not going to win, we'll support you like a winner. Yep. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm gonna talk some mess too. The, all the noise, but RGT, pro- can you go on the stream and then just maybe wear a mask of me, so then you're the only one in trouble for not supporting him. Um, y- yeah, no problem at all. I mean, obviously sounds... with the time zones and other stuff, you know, I. Well, it means no. it, it I don't want to promise. Slightly disturbing, but also a little bit fizzy. So yeah, I'm up for that. So. I'm also going to be um... <laughs> like gone off coleslaw. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also going to be um, in another tournament coming up um, for a game I'm looking forward to playing called AEW Fight Forever. As now well. I'll be here for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm I, cool. I'm very excited to lay the smack down on all who challenge me in that game. You Are know, you able to create your own character for that? 
Yeah, you are. Not for the tournament, but you're able to oh. actually. The tournament, it's like, it's randomized. So you can't even choose your character. It's all randomized and you kind of stuck that? with who you get. Like, like a UFC game? No, it's a, it's almost like a WWE No Mercy style type of game. Very arcadey, like old school um, wrestling style game. Oh, wow. That's, okay. And it's coming out later this month on the 29th, if I'm not mistaken. But um, yeah, that Correct. I'll be involved in a tournament for that and also playing that extensively. So you'll be able to hear my thoughts on that on this podcast as well. Cool. Awesome. Um, it's just me. George, what it? are you going to be playing? Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do for a George? <laughs> I've got on the script of my own show. Apologies, everybody. <laughs> um, I'm going to be playing a little bit more Star Trek, I think. I'm going to be nibbling very gently on bomber crew i kind of don't want it to end i've got a unfortunate i've got a little bit sort of oh, the end in a fallen um jedi survivor is not what i hoped it to be and i'm a bit sort of burned out yeah i just need to finish it the expected happened and then the expected happened again and it's like oh dear okay okay i just need to sit down and see it through um have you not been the story yet? <clears throat> this is the very last part that I need to do. Okay. Gotcha. And, um, mm, yeah, well, we'll see. Like I say, everything else about it, I love the controls, the settings, other bits and bobs, but I find the story is really most egregious to me. So we'll <laughs> we'll see how that plays out and if my opinion's still the same when the credits roll. Uh, I think I said Star Trek. I'll be playing a bit of that. Probably try and slip back into MLB. I think we're going to kick Madden out of the rotation. It's dead to me now. It, it was interesting, but now it's not. Um, so I need to get back on the MLB train. Uh, and then some farming simulator, and I'm I'm happy. I might have a little mooch around. Oh, as a as an aside, if anyone's looking at topping up their... It's happened to come across my eyes because it was a, a very good deal. Um, the state of um, the days of play campaign is out on PlayStation now, so you can up your membership for a very heavily reduced oh, yeah. price 25% forget, off exactly. And don't forget, you can stack them. Apparently, I'm now good until the end of 2026. Yeah, um, I think that means they have more sales than I have years, but uh, <laughs> there you go. I guess I'm all paid up, but when I see a good deal. Um, take it. you've got to take it because you never know. They might not be discounting this in a year's time and uh, the price with everything goes up. So if I can get it mm -hmm. reduced price and it goes up next year and then they offer 25% discount, I've still had a good deal. Mm -hmm. uh, and I implore everyone to do the same. Keep your eyes out on you know Nintendo or Xbox as well because whenever they put these things harshly in the sale or you can find a new way to join up or a new way to be a new joiner if, if you've expanded, if you've sort of depleted your current membership, Shop around for the deals, okay? Do yeah, it. for sure. Check out um, we have a site called a gaming site called Slick Deals. It'll send you like alerts for gaming deals like that as well. And mm, if you're a Twitter sure. user, there's a site called um, there's a follow uh, account you should follow called Warrior Sixty Four. He posts like all the major gaming deals that you should definitely be on, be on the radar for. Like, legitimately, he's goaded. He's followed by a lot of major people in the gaming com community as well. Well, one thing I would say is just because we're moving towards your digital future doesn't mean currently that you can't get a deal or two. Um, you know, so don't feel like that price that you see on the store is the only price to pay. And don't forget to jump into some of these Xbox reward programs and PlayStation Stars because I've accumulated quite some money within those ecosystems that you can cash back out and spend on more games if you want to or cash back out and put towards your subscription if you want to. So these loyalty programs, well worth considering. Um, I think, gentlemen, after my public safety announcement at the end there, that's <laughs> about all we've got. Um, so I thank you for your time. And that's one last thing. To... Oh, last hang thing on before a we begin. Before we leave. contractually obliged to do one yeah. last thing. Yeah. Everyone, Summer Game Fest is coming up. We want to see you active in the Discord for Summer Game Fest um, season. Let us know what your favorite announcements are for, as of this showcase. Let, let us know what you're getting hype about. And uh, because, like, you know, they're going to be announcing things left and right. I think there are eight different showcases coming up within the next like two to three weeks and such like that. Mm -hmm. We want to see you engaged. We want to see you hyper. We want to see you hyper focused in the discord. Um, let us know what's speaking to you, what's not, what showcase you think is best. And we're going to do a roundup like segment Seb, in the show. Stop, Seb, stop. 
What's up? The way you're don't move. The way you're positioned right now, your ring light actually looks like your eyeball reflection in your glasses. Mm-hmm. Oh no, don't move. Oh, that was perfect. oh sorry. Is it you look like now? the Terminator of games? I was going to say, it looks like yeah, Terminator. <laughs> he looks like the. Uh, that's not a Terminator uh, version of who. Far hit, Cry man. Dragon. Mm-hmm. That's what it looks like. What's his name? Rex. Rex, I believe. Yeah. 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 Wow. Okay. This one, so we want to see you active in the Discord. <laughs> let's let's show out. Let's let's um. We want to hear about what's your favorite showcases as well. And you know, thank y'all for having me back. It's great to be back on the show. Really enjoyed. Um, Really enjoyed this episode and nerding out with all you guys. And for everyone, um, the Single Player Experience podcast has been doing really well. Thank you all so much for all your love and support. UK has actually been jumping up a lot for us in the numbers there. So thank you all. Hang on a minute. (laughs) Do you retrospectively hype the UCP at the end of your show? Yeah, I talk about the UCP when I'm also guesting on other people's shows as well. It's Have you been on Russian podcasts, Seb, that I don't know about? Is that why we're suddenly picking Russia? <laughs> no, I've been on a couple of German podcasts um, lately, though, making the rounds there. So, uh, Wow. Okay. Yeah. I was, I, going I, was, you want. I was on a, yeah Australian podcast not too long ago and oh, talked wow. about the UCP. And one um, one group, uh, one of the guys, the one of the hosts said, good ch- I, I've listened to that show before, good chaps and such like that. So, oh. you know. Spreading the word there. Another, oh, wow. Spreading the word there. So, do do we pay you commission for this? Nah, nah, it's part of the contract. So, thank you all so much for having me. You know, no, I pay, I pay for K quite the retainer. Yeah, for sure. All the chocolates, all the chocolates. So, thank you all so much for having me back on the show. (laughs) Love talking to y'all. Go check out the single player experience, y'all. And, you know, also just. You know, treat everyone kindly and nice and treat people the way you want to be treated. And thank y'all. Okay. Triple S has left the building. Yep. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Shades off. He's gone. You can't speak anymore. That's so you break the illusion. That's all we have time for all this week. Lessons as always. Thank you for your time. We look forward to the pleasure of speaking to you again next week. Until then, happy gaming. And remember, there's nothing wrong with being given the unofficial control. It's what you do with it that counts. See you guys. Peace. Laters. Triple S, you got to pop your head back in and say bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>